Hi, everybody. Welcome to the program. When most of us think of art, we probably picture the Mona Lisa or one of the paintings by Picasso. But here in front of the Ramada Hotel in New York City is a sculpture called The Lover's Bench. As you can see, it's rather sexually explicit. The couple on your left engaged in a passionate embrace, while a third nude figure stares off into the distance. Now, this piece is also a good example of the controversy raging in this country over what is art and what is smut. Now, this is another example of what is art to some, smut to others. It's a segment of a performance piece called Love Spit Love. Now, other forms this controversial art takes is in paintings and in photographs, some of which now adorn our studio walls. Now, we'll be hearing from the artists in many of these, uh, for many of these works who will defend their work against those who feel that it is nothing but smud and schlock and should be banned. Okay, censorship on the one hand and pornographic extremism on the other have threatened art almost since pen was put to paper and paint to canvas. Take a look right now at some notorious recent examples. On December 9, 1988, the photographer Robert Maplethorpe opened one of the most controversial exhibits in American history. The issue was Maplethorpe's photography art or smut. Well, today, more than a year after the exhibit, a passionate debate still rages over what constitutes artistic freedom of expression. I'm slightly nauseous. You're also a Nazi lady. You're welcome. Nice. You don't have to go back hand. Yeah. There are to, only four or five from the Constitution with your jackpot. The battle is being fought from living rooms to libraries, from classrooms to Congress. At stake is finding a balance between First Amendment rights and the right of any community to ban pornography. Artistic curriculum and millions of dollars in grants from the National Endowment for the Arts add a financial component to this debate. Pro-censorship groups have already succeeded in altering the scripts of television shows, changing the film rating system, and forcing record label warnings. Some fear even book burning may not be far off. Artists who fear both the spiritual and the financial loss are fighting back. As in all wars, this conflict makes for strange bedfellows. In times of censorship, artists realize that anyone could be a target. History bears this out. Among the artists whose works have been banned, Ulysses by James Joyce, Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger, The Beatles, Cat Stevens, Jesus Christ Superstar, O. Calcutta, the photographer Jock Sturgis, comedian Lenny Bruce, Andrew Dice Clay, Sam Kinison, Two Live Crew, Demi Moore's cover on Vanity Fair, the film New Jack City, Guns and Roses. It's been said that beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and nowhere is that more true than in my studio today. Let's meet these artists now, and we'll also meet those who feel their work is nothing but smut. This is Gigi Allen. Gigi is a rock and roller who makes the most wild punk groups pale in comparison. I don't know if you'll recall this, but he made the news recently, Gigi did, when it was revealed that he relieved himself on stage, live. Why, Gigi, did you feel a need to, uh, to defecate in front of a live audience? Well, my body is the rock and roll temple, and my flesh, blood, and body fluids are a communion to the people, whether they like it or not. I mean, I'm not, not out to please anybody. My, my rock and roll is more not to entertain, but to annihilate. And, you know, who, I don't... who is it that you would like to annihilate? I hate everybody. You know, anybody that's in my way, I just want to take them out. It's my, it's my revenge, really. You know, I just go through my mind like a machine gun. My body is the bullets and the audience is the target. And I see that rock and roll has just become so institutionalized that you've got people in monkey suits, you've got college jocks, and people with money running the industry. And I'm, I'm trying to bring danger back into rock and roll. And there are no limits and no laws. And I'll break down every barrier put in front of me till the day I die. But the applause, in case you're curious, is coming from uh, a, a G.G. Uh, Allen fan club there in the first two rows. Notice the cool mustache on the third guy in on the first row. You get a shot of him? Merle. What's his name? That's my brother Merle. He's my bass player for the Murder Junkies. Oh, is it? All right. Great. I love that mustache. It's really a happening, happening, uh, happening. He looks like George Bush. Right. Well, 
That was, uh, that was just said by Reverend Bud Green. Bud Green, get it? Well, he has a band called Just Say Yes. Now, Bud likes to pass out uh, marijuana joints to his audience during his performances. Now, you and Gigi share the same record label. Yeah, we're on Everrat Records. And uh, one thing I'm planning, our album's coming out in January, I'm planning to put a joint in each tape. And a razor blade. <laughs> For his, I guess. <laughs> You'll put a razor blade, I'll put a joint in my... <laughs> uh, Gigi, why do you want to put a razor blade? See, everybody commits suicide at the same time. Get rid of did some you of have the a, Did you have a troubled childhood? <laughs> should, should I have booked you for a no. child abuse case? Not really. I, you know, I just... When I was growing up, I stole. I broke into cars. I broke into houses. I sold drugs. And then I found rock and roll. And that kind of balances me out, because I don't think if I'd have found rock and roll to balance out my life, I probably would end up being a serial killer or, or probably a mass yeah, And you may still. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I just got all this anger <laughs> built us, up inside I, I, of me. I, I, I'm, it's I'm, obvious. You know, I'm it's... sick of people. I just hate people. I walk down the street and I see a bunch of <laughs> robots, if you will. Jeez, you know, you people that, some people that look lot. like your audience, you know, with their ties and their stupid little, you know, robotic lives. I just don't, I don't want to deal with any of that at all. Give us, uh, we'll bleep it, as we have been bleeping everything you've been saying up until now, but give us an example of a lyric. Can you give us a, li a lyric? Well, we've got one call, I love nothing. You know, I'm a, I'm a cold nothing will hitch. I was a fetus infected son of a People in possessions only slow me down. I'm on a burning bridge. You're in my way, you're going down. <laughs> uh, again, I point out for the record that... Uh, Gigi Allen's a uh, fan. Oh, his, the name of Gigi's band, incidentally, is the Murder Junkies Band. The Murder Junkies Band. Uh, could you show uh, John right there the tattoo on your, on your, uh, it looks hand done. On what? On your chest. I got a load of them. Live fast, die. Live fast, die, yeah. And on Which the other side? That's the philosophy and of the other life. Side, what's, you, the, what's, you, uh, what's the other side say, Gigi? Vomit toast. I got a, they're all over. But you'll see. How old are you? I Gigi? came out naked, but they told me I'd put some clothes on. Yeah, it's the CBS I'm, I'm, security didn't lie. Uh, how old are you? I'm 35, but I've been doing this since I was 18. Since 18? Okay. Uh, now, now, Bud, you're the mellow side of the Ever Rat label. Uh, you like to pass out the joints. I mean, what's, what's your trip? You've been arrested for doing it, haven't you? No, I've never been arrested because being a Reverend Geraldo, I have the right to give my you're followers. A reverend, that's right. Yeah, Reverend, reverend Bud Green. I have the right to give my followers the holy sacrament of God known as marijuana. And I'll quote the Bible here for people who don't believe it. Genesis 1:29, and God said, ye shall partake of every herb bearing seed. That's what marijuana is. <laughs> uh, I've been around a long time. I never heard that justification. I, uh, but uh, what's, give us a lyric. Give us a, uh, the band Just Say Yes. Give us a lyric. Okay. We've got uh, a tune called Just Say Yes, of course. Uh, rich pig walks down Wall Street laughing as he strolls. The poor man begs for pennies while the rich pig just says no. After making them richer, I'll stop to take a bong. I see them feasting on my soul until I'm dead and gone. So trying to show people, you know, marijuana wakes you up. That's what marijuana is for. It's like an enlightening type drug. It's not right. cocaine. It's not a drug. Are you for cocaine? Cocaine is the devil. Crack? Marijuana is God. Heroin? Heroin's the devil too. Only marijuana and psychedelic drugs like mushrooms and peyote. How old are you, bud? 29. Now, what does your mom say about your profession? Uh, my parents are basically part of the, the middle class uh, establishment type people, so of course they're against what I do. Okay. Now, uh, Stefan Stux? Correct. Is the owner of the Stux Gallery right here in New York, down in the Soho district. Now, the gallery displays what some are calling uh, sacrilegious works uh, of art, especially one piece by Andre Serrano. It is a painting here in our studio depicting, take a shot of it there, that red one. It's depicting a crucifix. Uh, now it looks submerged, but the, uh, the liquid is what offends most people. Stefan, why don't you tell us the name of the painting and what exactly it's in? Well, the uh, picture represents uh, a crucifix immersed, immersed in the artist's urine. So he generically has called it Christ. And of course, uh, this has uh, created a lot of controversy. Um, wait, wait, Stefan, you, you're uh, Italian. Italian? Actually, East European, East but I'm European. American now. Are you Catholic? Uh, not Are you really. Christian? Well, uh, 
not, not, not either of Do you know that. any I mean, Christians? Of course. Uh, Don't you understand how Andres people Serrano. would be offended by a crucifix in urine? Absolutely. I can very well understand that sort of thing. But the role of the artist and the art is actually to look at things in, uh, how should I say, in a more complex fashion. If you look at the, the photographs of Andre Serrano, and that one in particular, it is very beautiful. It, in a sense, is as beautiful as any artwork that you might see adorning an altar. But it is an insulting piece. In well, that's exactly the point. It is ambiguous. It has, it's controversial because in one sense it is very seductive. In another sense, it is very thought-provoking. For we, we are associating usually uh, body uh, excretions, let's say in this case urine, with, let's say, a pejorative or a negative Yes, with G. G. Allen's act. Right. right. But on the other hand, you can look at it differently, as Andres has looked at it, as really a, a, an expression, or let's say, of toil and pain and suffering. So what Andres is trying to do is to bring back into the Christian imagery a sense of the body and uh, something that is close to us, which we have really uh, gone quite far well, Maybe away if he had it. put it in sweat, people could understand the yes. toil aspect, but urine, I think, is, uh, is well, really... Well, uh, he could not collect enough of his own sweat, oh, okay, so okay, he, okay. He, he okay. managed then, to collect enough if, of if his If he had used uh, you know, a spritzer <laughs> from a bottle of Evian water, I don't think anyone would have known. Uh, Kelly uh, Coutron, and Jim Bob, could you get uh, that video again of the dancers with the flag? Kelly is the creator of... Uh, that controversial piece we showed you a, a brief clip of, the piece called Love Spit Love. Kelly, where does the uh, title come from and what was the inspiration for the piece? Uh, the inspiration uh, was just sitting home and watching all the censorship that started happening uh, from people like Tipper Gore and Jesse Helms and everything else that was going on in the country. And to me, I just started getting really frustrated. And uh, Love Spit Love, the spit kind of represents uh, the exchange of bodily fluids that people have to think about while they're having sex in 1991. Uh, we only had the clip, so what, it was three couples? Three couples, one straight, one gay male, and one lesbian nude, installed as living sculpture in an art gallery. And dancing in front of an American flag? They weren't dancing, there was one American flag installed on a wall. And they were just embracing? And they were each roped off, like, like sculpture that you would see in a museum. And they were kissing and caressing to love songs from the 1950s through the 1990s. Robert Peters, uh, we've got to take a break. I want a very brief statement from you right now, and we'll hear much more from you as the program progresses. Robert Peters is a member of the group called Morality in Media. Are you repulsed, sir, by what you've seen so far? Well, I'm a lawyer, and I tend to look at it from a legal perspective. And just very briefly, the first group, I think there are public lewdness and indecency laws. There are... Well, Gigi was convicted. Drug laws that apply yes. the, the argument this, that this is protected by the First Amendment Freedom of Religion Clause was just shot down by a recent Supreme uh, Court case. Green. The uh, second group uh, had to do with a public funding issue, and I, I think I'm safe in saying that if uh, Mr. Fronmeyer, who is the head of the NEA, made a practice of funding projects that depicted uh, racist stereotypes or anti-Semitic stereotypes or depicted women as enjoying rape or being slaves to men or depicted all homosexuals as molesters of children, there'd be a real outcry. But, you know, Mr. Fronmeyer thinks it's appropriate to fund art that offends, let's say, people who cherish the Judeo-Christian tradition. Now, the last comment in terms of the third group, I really am not overly familiar, but I would say that what I do somewhat remember her exhibit, I don't think it was publicly funded, and as long as she steers clear of obscenity laws, she has a constitutional right to show what I think is garbage. <laughs> is it garbage? Or more specifically, is it art or is it smut? That's the focus of this edition of Heraldo. with us right now, Jeff Coons. He's uh, an artist. His exhibit in New York Soho District uh, prohibits minors. It is so explicit and less in the company of adults. It's erotic works. I think we have some photographs that star his wife. She is the Italian porn star and I guess former porn star, present politician Ciccolina is her name. Uh, Jeff, uh, I haven't seen this stuff. I've just heard of it. Well, I guess we'll see it with our audience. 
but as I understand it, it is very, very explicit. I saw one picture. Uh, you and your wife, I guess, or somebody, some other guy and your wife engaged in very explicit sex, including penetration in the sculptures. Uh, is that art or is that pornography? Uh, Geraldo, all of the uh, works in the exhibition are of myself and my wife. Uh, I believe that it's very important in a time of AIDS to uh, communicate that people can have total uh, sexual freedom and liberation, but uh, it's important to communicate that this freedom can be in a monogamous uh, relationship. So we're looking at photographs. I thought there were sculptures as well. Uh, there's sculptures. I don't know if uh, you have the photographs there in the studio. Uh, some of them are hard sculptures where penetration is taking place. Some of them are of puppies and of uh, flowers. Uh, at least one of them has uh, bodily fluids accompanying a, a sex act uh, with your wife in a very compromising position. Uh, aren't you embarrassed? Uh, absolutely not. If I can communicate to people that if they can embrace themselves and if they can have the true pornography of the world, which are things which, which uh, segregate people from life, uh, the idea of the sophisticated segregates people from life, the idea of the important segregates, uh, taste segregates, this work tries to bring people in uh, contact with life, to listen to life, listen with your eyes, with your ears, and uh, physically listen. Are you surprised that the controversy their work has generated or did you expect it indeed did you plan on it I think uh, great art has a responsibility to communicate I never have tried to create anything shocking I don't think the Michelangelo when he created the 16th ceiling which to me is about masturbation in the highest sense it communicates to people to be in contact with their bodies you feel your muscles through the exaggeration if you look at the figures on the ceiling and it wasn't uh, to create uh, controversy, but it was to communicate to people. And Jeff Koons is trying to do the same thing. Uh, Jeff, thanks. Robert, your response? Mr. Koons' uh, exhibit differs from Michelangelo's because Michelangelo's sticks with mere nudity. And uh, Mr. Koons' exhibit uh, shows he and his wife engaging in vaginal sex and oral sex and in... Uh, sodomy and i can say honestly that if you went down to 42nd street you'd find the same types of depictions in the hardcore videos and the hardcore magazines now i guess mr coons would somehow argue that he has elevated what traditionally would be considered depictions of hardcore sexual conduct to art i disagree i think that mr coons is making a wonderful name for himself and and i don't personally believe that his works are art. I think they're very pornographic. The actual, the actors who are in Love Spit Love, two of them at least, are here. Would you stand and introduce yourself, please? Hi. And you're? Natasha Sudek. And you're? Reed Hutchins. Reed, did you get a lot of heat for being in the uh, video? Or the, the play, I should say. Actually, I think um, just about everyone was supportive. Um, there was really no... There was controversy, but even my parents relatives, people I met on the street would stop me and they were very supportive of the uh, exhibition. Natasha, what kind of dance do you usually do? Well, I'm an actress, not a dancer. Reed's the choreographer. But um, support-wise, it was wonderful. All of May and June, we couldn't walk a block in New York without someone coming up and thanking us for trying to make a difference in the gay community, et cetera, et cetera. So it was really nice. The show was, the show was very unifying for all of New York. And the, it also opened up the artwork to, to a whole different group of people because of the attention, uh, the controversy, I guess, that uh, was brought toward the show. I mean, you had people of all different ages, from all different races, all different forms of sexuality, coming into an art gallery that maybe before had felt alienated by the art world. And it was something that they could relate to. And part of the reason why we had the couples in the nude was there was, you know, Gigi said earlier about robots, you could not form an opinion based on how they were dressed or anything. They were just, you know, people are born yeah, you certainly new. Couldn't. Yeah, but you've got people here, too, that they're, they're trying to create something that is uniform. My whole thing has is, is got nothing to do with this, so let's, let's get a performance group together and let's, let's do, like, some performance art and we'll draw a line. My, my show is completely out of line. I, I don't care if people don't like what I do. And if you don't, I don't even care if you don't think it's art. I'm out to inflict pain on people as much as I'm into inflict pain on myself. And that pain creates strength, power, and endurance, because if you put yourself through that tragedy every day, you can face that tragedy when it hits you. Todd, I'm you're not an NYU to do any uniform.
Oh. You book Gigi's uh, band in your school? Yeah, well, I'm doing a documentary film on Gigi through NYU Film School, and uh, I had to, I wanted to get a spoken word type performance from Gigi, so I booked it through school, and we had some problems there. But what happened? What did Gigi do, first of all? Um, he came out on stage naked, which was what they had a problem with right away, and... Oh, well, <laughs> well I mean, it was, and went around, collected money from the crowd, and basically everybody in the audience was scared and in about less about three minutes and everybody ran out and <laughs> threw a chair and people, i mean he, people come because they want to see something very dangerous and they're going to get it there's no re, there's no fake blood there's there's no props mm -hmm. like most of the bands you'll see today on major labels mm -hmm. you'll see real blood you'll see real broken bones and that's beautiful that's art. Right. When well, people are leaving my right. shows yeah. and they're in pain, that's a, that is I, I beautiful. Got it I got it. Real blood and real broken bones, man. That's art. Uh, that's art. Right. That's art. Right. That's art. Right. 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 What the hell do you know? You can't get the hell out of here. You can't get the hell out of Enemies with your ex. Is breaking up really hard to do? That's the question. Next to Aldo. Oh, Gigi has uh, revealed his uh, banged up palate there. Yes, sir. Geraldo, I just want to make a comment. When I woke up this morning, I was still in America. I think this is a great country, and I think we should be free to explicitly uh, act on any sort of art form that we wanted to, and we should just basically be able to do what we have to do and uh, you think that you should be i mean gg should be permitted to throw uh excre excrement in your face if you're in his concert if it's part of it you know i don't have to uh to see it. perform i don't have to uh you have to go i don't have to go there and be part of it uh as we run the uh, todd's video robert what do you think about what do you think about the first amendment question when it comes to someone like gg well, historical, historically, uh, the video running, by the way. historically, the First Amendment has never been thought of as protecting every form of expression. And two forms that are not protected are obscenity and child pornography. Within limits, if these gentlemen, ladies, steer clear of those legal limits, they have a right to exhibit their materials, not necessarily on a street corner, but certainly in a private museum, for example. That was Gigi getting thrown out of NYU. Yes. I wanted to ask Gigi if um, that is that your street clothes or do you perform in them it's clothes? My street clothes. I mean, I don't. I do the same things on stage as I do off. Let me make that perfectly clear. This do you have a roommate? A you must be. You will never see me out house. of this dog collar, ever. See, it seems like you hate the world. Do you hate the world? Yeah, and I hate you too. <laughs> uh, Ro Robert, I wonder. Or let me ask uh, Betty or uh, or Patty in the front row, also from Morality and Media. Do people like Gigi who are so extreme? Do they make the case easy? the case uh, for censorship easy? Well, personally, somebody like Gigi, I think, is hardly worth commenting on. But in general, historically... Well, look at you for <laughs> That's Chris. Well, you know, All right, let's keep... Gigi, keep it clean here. Here we have a person who is so full of anger and misery that he's about to explode. Historically, real art... that what rock and roll is all about? It's for the real rebellious people and the real underwear. It's not for people me, like you. Me, rock and roll has nothing first to do amendment. with you Can or I your speak? life. It's first for the amendment. people like me and the people who are really angry, the real outcasts. It's not for people who wear ties hey, and make Gigi, money off it. It's amendment? for people who live something? it 24 hours a day. Okay, Gigi, stifle it. Gigi, Yes, go ahead, Patty. You're so ignorant on what you're saying. Stop it, no how, names, how do you have okay? an ignorant? You don't let me say anything. And well, you're representing the First Amendment. Anyway. Historically, historically, real art has uplifted and inspired and appeals to an aesthetic interest, and pornography appeals to a prurient interest. Here we have some perfect examples of people who think they're very sophisticated, laughing all the way to the bank by exploiting themselves and pushing pornography on the public. Are you talking about Stefan Stucks and uh, the urine? The Christ. Well, I mean, to say that people can relate to this stuff is like saying people can yeah, relate yeah. to going to the bathroom. Well, What's the point? Pants or something? Uh, well, there's a point. I don't I even think know what a bank is. And it's not an artist's job to please, to offend, to do anything to affect. An artist simply represents and reflects upon society as it is. There's murder in society. There's AIDS in society. There's homosexuality in society. Maybe not in the world that you live in, but in the real world, that's where it is. And these people are simply chronicling it. If I may interrupt quickly, just as newspaper and the media have to live within the law, so do artists. And there is also the issue of public funding. What might be no. permissible to show is not necessarily... I have a question for Gigi. 
Okay. All right. want to institutionalize it so that Here's they can keep it you, under control. Okay. If you hate the world, if you hate everybody, do you hate your brother? Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> I beat the <laughs> out of him occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you. You. Uh, Gigi, uh, would you like your band to be number one one day? We never will be because of people like this. I'd like to ask Todd, the filmmaker from NYU, if where's documentary is going to be shown and how much trouble did he get in from NYU for bringing G? You get suspended, Todd? Uh, no, they, I had some trouble with the dean where they uh, wrote some letters, maybe possibly not allowing it to be finished through NYU. But as of now, it's on hold. It's like in deliberation. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, I just like to say, I think you're totally off the wall putting something like that in an art gallery and calling it art. Hey, I stuck those up before. Uh, I want to know what's the craziest. Gigi, one more crack, and I'm gonna have to ask you to leave, buddy. I, you know, just keep it, keep yourself in control. What's the craziest thing you ever done on stage, Gigi? Oh, don't ask him that. You just encourage him. Well, I'll tell you, I can keep that. I'll tell you, I don't think it's yeah. crazy. I don't think what I do uh, is outrageous. The issue remains is that censorship. Why am I still being censored on CBS? Essentially, I, I, I didn't put that, those black tabs on that. my 1976 body, but somebody did. And I find that extremely offensive that while we're talking about an important, relevant issue, I've been censored. I haven't been censored as brutally as I have been here right now, and I'm sitting through all this nonsense by people involved with media. Not, this supposedly is not a work about media, but about, about one objecting to people using each other in society, how women have always been used as objects, as porn stars, by my taking control of my own body to different issue than Jeff Koons using his wife. That's real safe sex in a, in a society that is afraid. It's a very easy work of art. There are, as you know, in the broadcast networks, standards and practices, and so far in this country, although it's different in, in Europe, for example, frontal nudity, full frontal nudity is not allowed. I mean, are you, I, I give you permission to take the things off your breasts if you want to, but not your bottom. All right, she's going to go and... Uh, you want to show your breasts on TV? No, no, I don't think so, right? Yes. Yeah. If I might say, the, uh, it's not so clear that legally um, the lady ahead, what? can do what she's doing on the broadcast media. Clearly, right. pictures like that could be seen in very similar in a Playboy magazine. Right. People are certainly... Those who want to purchase that type of magazine can do so, but to... To transmit this type of what is might be called softcore pornography in every living room, I find that very offensive, and I would hope that someday I don't think the you FCC know enough about art to make, make anything credible. Let's take a break. I'll let all the artists reveal their works in a moment. Or is it mine? And that's our focus. Yes. When, when the morale goes down, when everything is so sexy in the country, that brings on criminals and, mo and, and takes uh, out the self-respect from each person and the respect for others. So you believe that explicit art leads to sex crimes and things of that nature? Well, a lot of people do and a lot of people do not. Let me go to Hannah. Let me, uh, I want to go to Jim. Jim, this is your work. Is this the... the part of the piece that you painted for the John Wayne Airport in uh, Orange County? Actually, Geraldo, neither one of these paintings is that. The one on the left, the, uh, they're called the Icarus figure, uh, relates to that work. Um, but looking at it now and sitting here, it seems really absurd that these two paintings, as traditional, listen, I'm the caveman here. I paint with oil paint. I do paintings that deal with the figure. Um, because that's what I'm most interested in, and I deal with them in a fairly classical way. I mean, wouldn't most people agree that this is pretty classical art? I mean, that's just because the people happen to have no clothes on. I... Now, uh, Robert, you couldn't possibly object to this. Uh, I don't. It's not my cup of tea, but I certainly have no objection to right. it on a that's legal what, basis. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. Uh, uh, Patty, what do you think? No objection. Again, real art uplifts, and it shows the beauty of the human form, which I believe this does, as opposed to some of the other what I would consider to be um, trash on the wall. I have a question. Who gave you the definition of what real art is? I said historically, so that, it, that is... There is no itself. definition of real art. And what was offensive in 1600, in that day and age, now today is considered classical. And but Kelly, what about Jim Kuntz's painting Jeff or sculptures uh, in which he's engaged in intercourse or oral yeah. sex with his wife and it's 
The, is that art? I think, I mean, Jeff did it. It's in a gal gallery. He's an artist. He says it's art. It's art. However, I also think that as an artist as popular as Jeff, historically, 50 years from now, that will be kind of a great time capsule of the artist in his uh, life. That's an interesting point. Stefan, how much does Kunst sell his work for? Uh, he's selling his works in, with, in substantial numbers, how I many, say. How many figures? Five, six figures? Well, I would say uh, five figures easily, uh, sometimes six, low six figures So into the hundreds well. of thousands of dollars? Well, I'd say Indeed. that some um, art critics state um, that uh, his work could be, in terms of the quality of it, you could get something similar in a bric-a-bac store for $20 that people would pay 200000 for. So okay. people do differ yeah. as to Gino, the quality just of uh, Mr. Coombs' work. Well, my name is Gino Rodriguez, and I'm the director of the Alternative Museum. I'm also an artist. Uh, Geraldo, one of the things I want to say before I talk about the artworks on the wall is that I find an imbalance here in this presentation. I feel... Don't criticize the show. I hate when my guests are becoming producers. Just you talk to the art, okay? I'm going to talk to the fact that there are no artists being represented out here, out on that stage, talking about the fact that there are artists who use nudity, not as nudity, but as a, a form of social change. And I could start with Judith... Uh, Put it in the context of the work. Go ahead. You have Sal, uh, Shelley Bachman's work here. It's called Caught. It's from the Attraction Repulsion series, and it deals with the way women are manipulated in society from Barbie dolls to little girls to big girls, women are used and manipulated. This artist is not using the work for sexual reasons, nor is it for pornographic reasons or whatever other okay. kind of Step reasons. aside, let the audience vote, sort of. Uh, I think I agree with him on this piece. Okay. You have, and, I, and I'm going to go briefly through these, you have Judith Schechter's work, which deals with rape. This is an artist who's trying to bring to the attention to uh, an elite group of an encoded few people in the art world, the fact that rape is occurring all the time. The artist's name again? Judith uh, Schechter. Geraldo. Your feelings? Hold it. Your feelings? I agree. All right. You may not like it, but it's not pornography. Okay. Anna, we've already discussed. Okay. And you have Robin Michaels, who, who talks about the way women are used uh, daily uh, uh, in, in terms of sexual jokes amongst men and women. Uh, and how that affects the lives of women. Now, she has a joke here. What is a Chinese girl's favorite holiday? Erection day. Okay, this is, this is a joke that people use all the time. But it is offensive to Asian Americans, and in the same way it is offensive to all people of color, to all women, all gay people. It is not about the sexual joke. It is about artists who are out there struggling struggling to, to, to make a change in the world as opposed to the circus that I see up on the stage. I don't feel that that is art. I don't feel that he's an artist, and I feel that this... Wait, wait, wait. wait. You're, so you're saying that Gigi and Bud, for instance, are not artists? For me. I cannot be the arbitrator for see, other people. Do you see the danger, Gino? Now you've become the arbiter. You say this is Absolutely. art, that's not art. And that is my job as a museum director, and that is my job as an artist. Well, Kelly, does he have the right? Of my public and to be conscientious what of I think the is artist and to be conscientious of my own self. Well, all right, I think, full right, stop. The, the beautiful thing is that today you're entitled to your opinion and I'm entitled to mine. And what scares me as an American and a taxpayer in a very high bracket, I might add, is that five years down the road we might not be able to have an opinion because we might not be able to go and see these shows. And that's the scary part for me. Well, I think that's a little bit ridiculous, but one point well, I'd like rude. to make... Has that television sets in Washington somebody, you know, the Smurfs? I, I think mean, society has know, to... You there's a real problem. <laughs> well, Robert, somebody, hurry up, gotta take okay. a break. Somebody has to determine what Did art is. Did you really is. ban the Smurfs? <laughs> the no. It's violent. The that, Morality you know, and media. Yeah. Okay. If somebody you're very confused. Confused. No, 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 very that's confused. wrong. If, We're all oh, wrong. I'm very confused. Or only we'll talk later. Excuse me, if, if somebody goes up to 42nd Street and cuts out a picture from one of the hardcore pornographic magazines and takes it to a, a, a art gallery and calls it art, I disagree with the young lady that that makes it art. And that is what she said. It, that to me is ridiculous. It's there have to be some standards it by may, which... It may be bad art, but it's art. I'll be right back. Thank you. Let's see. Uh, from the morality and media. Let's get back to, I guess, what's at the heart of the discussion here, Betty. Don't you see the danger if a group like your own, for example, morality and media, were to be the arbiters of art or smut? What you were, if you were to say, 
we believe that this is art even though we don't like it. We believe, however, if you go one step further, it's no longer art and therefore should be banned. Don't you see that that's very, very subjective and, you know, uh, I forget all those cliches about one man's this is another man's that, but you get the point. Well, I think obscenity is illegal across the board, and artists are not immune to that. And it's not a subjective definition, really. There's a, there's a legal definition of it. And if it were taken into court, it would, it would be up to a jury. Do you, would, do you now, know a legal definition that you'd like to share well, with us? Well, it has to appeal to the prurient interest. Um, according to contemporary community standards, which is why the, uh, th uh, these uh, examples over there are, are not pornographic. They're not. Uh, they're, they're, there's an aesthetic quality to them. They do not appeal to the prurient interest. Uh, number two, it has to be... How about Maplethorpe's photos, the ones that took him to court on a criminal mm -hmm. charge in Cincinnati? In my opinion, uh, I, I think they're hardcore pornographic uh, photos. There was no then. penetration in those photos. Yeah, well, there doesn't have to be. Uh, it could, you know, you, if it appeals to... Uh, the prurient interest, if, if it has depictions of um, patently offensive uh, sexual activities. And anything involving a, ch a child with her genitalia um, visible. And my question regarding those photographs has always been, who gave permission for that child's uh, genitals to have been photographed? And this Although I, I saw Jock Sturgis's photos, nude photos of children that were absolutely beautiful photographs. They tried to get a federal indictment against this guy out on the West Coast. The grand jury refused to indict. And I looked at them, and I, I, I got really worried. I have to share that with you. I mean, yeah. that nobody ever well, said that all of Jock Sturgis's depictions of nude kids constituted child pornography. There was a question as to whether some of them did, and a very respectable photo processing company, which processes a million photographs a year, had never turned any photographs over to the law enforcement authorities, and they dealt with some of Sturgis's work, but they felt that perhaps Mr. Sturgis crossed the board. I interviewed him, and line. he has been cleared. Now, Abe, what well, happened I when you... I would disagree that that grand jury indictment has that much significance. The, and the I would grand say jury this, failure to indict. <laughs> well, if they had, you know, if the prosecution had been initiated, in another jurisdiction, I think the results could have been very different. Abe, what happened to you when you put that statue, the one that we opened the program with, with the three nudes in front of your hotel? Didn't you lose a couple of conventions? Well, let me answer in general to your question of censorship. I believe in a different censorship. I'm in this country because of the Constitution that gives individual freedom. And every person has individual censorship. If he doesn't like something, he doesn't have to look at it. And no court has to tell us what we should look and what we should see. I, they have to look at your statue. It's right on 7th Avenue. They don't have to. They can pass by. They, they go look. like this? They yeah. don't like. They go further. I don't care which one Didn't and you how you lose what done. conventions? You lost two conventions. Two conventions. What the were they? Methodist they? and the um, Seventh-day Adventist. That's how they felt. That's their privilege. You were willing to sacrifice the business? Yes. To keep because so many more are willing to look at it, and we got ten times more business from it than before. <laughs> For instance, the bar next door, the Penn Bar, was doing $35,000 a week business before the statue came there. When the statue came, we, were, we doubled to $80,000 a year business, <laughs> which shows, in fact, that, that sex what's pays. Due. There's only one thing that I do. <laughs> I got to take a I, break. There's one thing that I do object. Hurry, it's quick. to Stephen's doing Christ in this, because I believe Stefan is Jewish and he should not show something that is objective to other people. Bravo! <laughs> well, first of all, okay, let me say something to that. I'm a gallerist and I look at artwork. When I first saw the work of Andre Serrano, which was indeed very controversial, and the, the artist, the artist, is the artist of course, and I have to respect his freedom regardless of what my uh, Let views are. Let show his or, freedom. That's not well, your freedom. The, 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 point, the point to it is that... The, yeah. the point. Speak Up America, we want to hear your comments and show ideas. Give us a call at 1-900-SPEAK-UP. Let us know what you're thinking. We'll record your message to play in a future broadcast. We may even call you to be a guest on a show. So call 1-900-SPEAK-UP. Don't forget, the call costs one dollar. We'll be right back. Larry Owner was deeply offended by what Abe Hirschfeld said. Uh, I'll give you 30 seconds to respond. 
uh, dear Mr. Fershfeld, I'm very surprised of you as a fellow Jew. I came to this country because I escaped narrowly the gas chambers, the crematoriums of, of uh, Hitler and of his fascism. All right, gentlemen, we're not going to get off okay. the point here, are okay. we? Uh, what's the point? And, and, and that of, of the communists, too. What they have done is that they have suppressed the art in the first place, whether it's religious or whether it was gay or anything like that. Too long, don't make and, one right. No, and these artists are your guardians or your safety. Uh, if you don't let them push the limits of your safety, you will be the next I one. I give all the limits, the individual quick, limits. Quick, Robert, limited. quickly. Just very yeah. quickly. The quickly, thing, quickly. There's something called the Weimar decadence. Oh, you're a second, bud. You're a second. Go ahead, so, quick. There's something called in history what is often termed Weimar decadence, which took place before Germany I came, saw before I Hitler came in. Oh, okay, so no, yeah, Reverend Bud Green. Oh, yes, Hold Bud. Bud, Bud. This is the new Hitler of the 90s. Stand up here, Hitler. George Bush is the new oh, Hitler of the 90s. Come on, get and on a second. Break. I'm going to show people how I worship the Lord. No, no, don't touch it. I want to Bobby. thank the Lord for giving me the holy herb. See, you guys can't control yourself. That's good at it. Have a seat, George. Yes, ma'am. I have a question for Gigi. I would like to know, if you dislike the world so much, what is your opinion of yourself? Well. <laughs> What's your opinion of yourself, Gigi? I feel very highly of myself. I'm God, Jesus Christ, and Satan all in one. There is no uh, higher power than Gigi <laughs> Allen. I apologize for some of my guests. We'll take a break. Hotel accommodations provided by Ramada Hotel at Madison Square Garden. The best location in Midtown Manhattan. Opposite Penn Station, steps from Macy's, AMS Plaza, and the Javits Convention Center. A promotional fee has been provided by... See this in the movies before they ever see a naked breast. Right. That's a good point. I just want to... Let's go to... I want to go... Robert, and this, Robert, has to be your last statement. Morality in media does not seem to be nearly as interested, with all due respect to the organization, in the violence we see on television or on film as it is in sexual depictions. Why not? Well, the primary reason is there aren't many court decisions that pertain to violence. There is a long history of constitutional decisions that pertain How do you personally to the sexually feel? explicit. And How we, do you feel when people get blown up and well, mass Well, personally, and... I think it's terrible, but then a lot of these people turn it on, and if they didn't, there wouldn't be any. But I but certainly... But wait a second. Using that argument, you'd have the sex of... Oh, no. Well, I personally the would The X-rated channels are the highest rated on cable. Well, I do think there are some distinctions between sex and violence, because I don't think most people get turned on by violence. I think most... Most oh, people wrong. do get excited <laughs> about it. Yeah, Gigi certainly does. Now, That's Gino, you think, do you think that the art I world has to be self-policing? Well, I Those think all, all of do. us have to be uh, self-policing. I think, well, I don't like the word self-policing. I think we all have to be responsible for the consequences of our action. I think, for example, that uh, to allow artists to speak on behalf of their work is very good. But I think we have to be responsible for what artists we choose to speak about what work. And that's where we fail. We don't put up the artists that are dealing with the social change. We put up the circus. That, we have to be responsible, Geraldo, you and I. Well, you know, I think Gino and Robert are actually very close in there. Yes. Bye, see you next time. This is rock musician Gigi Allen. His act includes nudity, obscenity, self-mutilation, and violence. He describes his conscience as a war zone, which also includes dragging young women on stage and physically abusing them. Today he'll face off with the father of a 17-year-old girl who has worshipped Gigi Allen for four years. A family who says Gigi Allen is dangerous. Please stay with us. Please meet Gigi Allen. Gigi has been arrested more than 52 times in over 12 states for the nudity, obscenity, and violence that are part of his music performances. He says that fans love the thrill of coming to his show knowing that their lives are in danger. Well, sitting next to him is 17-year-old Liz Mankowski. 
She's been a fan of Gigi since she was 13. Today is the first time she's ever met him. Gigi, describe first, if you would, what happens at your concerts. Well, first of all, rock and roll music to me it's always been about real re rebellion and nonconformity. And my mission is to put danger back into rock and roll, something that's been missing for a real long time. And I use my rock and roll as a weapon against society, the government, and the industry itself, who is trying to confine this type of music. And they're trying to preach to you. Rock and roll is not about what you look like, who you hang out with, how much money you make, what kind of car you drive. Rock and roll is the fury from within you. Rock and roll is revenge. Rock and roll is your enemy, and I'm your enemy. And what do you do at your concerts? I do whatever it takes. If somebody's in my way, I'll take them out. You know, they're, they're, they're there, they're my enemy. I don't look at them, they're not my friends. Okay, okay. Whoever's well, left at the end, then maybe I'll take them on as allies, because they were strong enough to, to be there. Okay, but the audience is sitting out here, and you're up on stage. What do you do on stage? That I might go out and kick somebody in the head. I might grab a girl and force her to uh, perform moral sex with me. I've had sex on stage with men, women, and animals, and everything in between. It, there are, see, the thing of it is, in rock and roll, there can be no limits or no laws, because when you start drawing laws and limits, then you might as well not even call it rock and roll anymore. Well, you might as well call sell it. out to the oh, corporate well, government it like it's already roll. done. It's not rock and roll. There's nothing it to do with rock, rock and roll. roll. If you, Isn't it true that you're just going on stage? No, that's your opinion. You're, you're part of the society that I despise. You're part of the people that say, we should listen to this, we should watch MTV, we should, we should be force-fed. Parents in this country, are tell they're keeping their kids, they're sheltering their kids, they're censoring their kids, telling their kids to stay away from what's really going on in the real world. Those are the very people who are getting raped and killed because they don't know how to handle tragedy because they're never put in front of a tragic situation. And we When they come to my show, I'm going to give them the hard lesson of life. If you get raped at my show, you're probably better off for it. <laughs> You say, way to go. Stand up. You, you think it's a great idea that he rapes people at his concerts? Uh, it's not a great idea, but if you go to one of his shows, you know what you're getting into. Yeah. Okay. I've been there. I know what but it's how like. How can you, 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 because I just stood here, I saw you here and you were kind of applauding and, and laughing along, and you think that his message is a good idea, that it's perfectly okay, it's a perfectly okay to take a woman out of the audience and rape her. It's America. Jerry, you gotta, it's America. If you have a daughter, do you have a mother? Yes. And it's perfectly okay if somebody takes your mother and rapes her? I wouldn't put her in that situation, no. Jerry, let me well, say wait a one second. thing. Well, why should the girl, thing. if your mother shouldn't be raped, then why should some other girl be raped? Well, I mean, who are we to suddenly say, and who are you if, in all if, fairness if, to if, suddenly if, stand okay, there and say, put it this oh, I'm going to teach you a lesson of life, I'm going to rape you. Yeah, right. Well, I'll tell you one thing. People feel sorry for themselves after they're raped, and that's not what they should do. They should build from strength. If a girl gets raped when she's 10, she may not get raped and killed when she's 15 because she'll be conditioned for that situation. And you're now, okay, you look at violence. You can look at violence from two sides of the spectrum here. Listen, you can look. Okay, if I'm a victim, I can grow strength from being a victim because I'm not going to let it happen to me again. And if I'm the predator, if you people out there, life is too short to play the waiting game. If there are people out there, if you've got something I want, what are you got, the first thing you're going to tell me is, why don't you submit it on paper? Why don't you hold up a picket sign? No, I'll put a gun to your head and I'll take it, because I ain't got the time to wait. What is it, all right, well, he's, okay. What is it, Liz, that you, that you find attractive in this man? I identify with the things that he says. I mean, I'm not saying I want to be raped. I'm not saying anything like that. But... You know, when I go to a concert, if he does something to me, I have just asked for it. Especially if I get myself... Wait a second. Why do you think a woman ever asks to be raped? If I... You have to know what to expect. I mean, you know, I mean, if I don't... Ex you know, you go to the thing expecting trouble. And if you don't, then, you know, and something happens to you and you say, Oh my God, you're so evil. Why the heck were you in there in the first That's place? That's the excitement of it. I'm sorry, I thought you'd go to a concert to hear music. You hear music? You, you hear music? You will terrorism. hear music, but uh, watch a video. But well, I mean, you know, you will definitely hear music, and probably some of the best damn music that you'll ever hear. Give me, uh, give me an example me, of let one. Me, you, let me also tell you another thing: what people are always coming to my shows and complaining about because I throw body fluids at the audience. So let me tell you: how many Christians are in this audience? How many people no. go to church on Sunday? You're the biggest hypocrites that I've ever seen. Because you go to church on Sunday, and you kneel at an altar, and you worship a false god. The real god's up here. 
And let me tell you one thing. Hey. When, when, hey. when they come to my show, okay. Dirk, you eat the body okay. of Christ, okay. they're going to eat the body okay. of GGL. At your, concerts, at your concerts, you can do what you want, but you don't call our guests, okay? You just don't do that. wanted to say, as far as I'm concerned, that is not real rock and roll. Then you're phony. No, you're no, phony. No, you are, no, you're, no, you're full of it. No, you're generation. full of it. Because you know what? No you, no, you sh no, you shut up. I don't have to you know shut what? up. You know what? What you're doing yeah, is you're degrading you. women. Down, you you're hog. raping. I'm, hey, I'm not a hog. I'm a human being. And no, you're, you're not. not. No. You're not a human being. You're I'm an animal. I'm an animal. You're right. And I'm proud of it, too. What is real rock and roll? What's? Well, I can tell you, is it this? Uh, is it this? Uh, music? Roll, roll wait, wait, wait! You need a mic. Rock and roll is not raping. It's not having sex with with animals on stage. No, no, that's not. Go on. What? what is rock and roll? Rock and roll. I'm sorry. That is not rock and roll. Oh, rock and roll is Elvis it. Presley. Yeah, you to say what is rock and roll? You probably don't even listen to rock Rolling and roll. Stones. You're okay. safe. You're safe. Corporate rockers who no, conform no. to society. And you. No. What do you listen you to? You don't have to. You don't have to have sex on stage. Why? And, and there's Why? no definitions. And have sex. On, you don't have to do that. Don't go to these Why shows do you expecting a nice, comfortable what little. What do you listen to? Look, I listen to classical, I listen to Spanish, That's I listen to rock problem. and roll, I listen to rock, I listen to all kinds of music. I like all kinds of music. So yeah, why, why are you putting definitions to to that? Why are you putting boundaries? Sorry, I, guess what she's, what she's, thank you. I guess what she's asking, though, is what does, what does defecating on stage... She's the person that doesn't believe in the... the, the what does defecating on stage or raping a woman or kicking someone in the audience, what has that to do with music? Defecation music is on notes. stage it's a tune. No. goes with what I do because the defecation is the communion to the audience. It's a communion to my allies. It's just like I told these people over here, they go to church on Sunday and eat the body of Christ. Well, why can't my followers come and eat the body of Gigi Young? Why should I get arrested? Why shouldn't they get arrested? Is that not cannibalism as well? You said something about you're against all forms of government. Okay, I'd like to ask you, how much money do you make a year? Very little. Very little? Very little. Enough to pay my hospital bills and my jail fines. And that's all. I don't have money. This is how I look. I'm not making money. If you think I'm into this for the money, you're dead wrong. Because I'm not doing this for the money. I'm doing this because it lives inside of me. As a, as a uh, musician myself, I can understand how you feel about certain censorships. But let me ask you, of your followers, how many of these people, if you had a 45 now, would you take out and be happy about it? Yeah, if, if it was, if I had to, I would. You I know? mean, how many of them would you do it? I mean, because as many as it took, whatever they had, I wanted, I'd have to go for. So, how would you guys feel about getting taken out? They could try to take me out pop, too. It's, it's a, you know, it's a war. They know when they come to my show, they put me in the hospital. I've been beaten up. I beat them up. It's not just a one-sided thing. No, that's it's, that. I think that's good if that's what you guys. And I, I think that you should have the right what to do you mean that? you think it's good? Well, with his crowd, with his crowd. Because, like he said, they pay to see it. Nobody that knows what he's about would go there and expect to be treated uh, like you're at the. Uh, I dare say, absolutely, I dare say, absolutely, that here's the problem: there are 14-year-olds and 16-year-olds, and they haven't yet figured, as any 14 or 16-year, haven't yet figured out the ways of the world. But it is a rebellious stage; it is a, an impressionable age. And I could see a couple of the kids in the neighborhood being talked into it. Hey, G.G. Allen's coming to town, man. It's wild. Let's go down. And so an innocent 14 and 16-year-old, hearing that there's going to be trouble or whatever, but it's kind of exciting. And as 14 and 16-year-olds, we all kind of do things that maybe are a little more exciting than we think we should be doing. And you go down there, and all of a sudden, they see you, and they see what you're doing, and they see you actually raping a woman. Don't tell me that everybody that goes to the concert says to you, they, it is okay, rape me. Audiences do the same thing. I've seen people in my audience leave with broken bones, broken arms. I've seen them leave on stretchers. I've seen uh, rapes before me. It, it's, it's just all a part of It's a great thing. It's, it's, a, it's a powerful thing. Yeah. It makes well, you powerful. Liz's family is here today to warn parents that Gigi Allen is dangerous. They'll face off with Gigi when we return. Please stay with us. Joined 
Yes, we're talking with rock performer Gigi Allen, who, uh, if you've ever been to one of his concerts, you'll certainly remember it. He is, uh, he is violent on stage. He does things which, uh, well, he does things, everything from defecating on stage to raping women to uh, going into the crowd and uh, beating up on the people there. Um, not your, uh, certainly not your Perry Como of this generation. Uh, now I want you to meet Liz's father, John, and her sister, Sarah. John said it scared the hell out of him when he realized what Gigi Allen was all about. Liz's sister, Sarah, says Gigi Allen is dangerous. John, as a father, what worries you most about her going to the concerts? What's going to happen to Liz when someone takes Gigi's philosophy to heart and doesn't realize, I think that if she feels this is a joke or a game or it's harmless or the moth playing at the flame, maybe one of the people who really think that rape is a cool thing is going to take that seriously. And I don't want Liz or my daughter Sarah or any other young woman or any woman to be raped. It's, it's a heinous crime. Sarah, you, you, are gen you would expect, and then let me sign on to your philosophy here, um, but you could say as a daughter, well, that's dead. You know, our parents, you know, or maybe were dealing with Sinatra, and then it was Elvis Presley, and then it was the Beatles. And every generation of rock, it seemed, had somebody that was going to bring about the end of the world. But you are Liz's sister, same generation. What conversations have you had with Liz about, geez, you know, this guy? Yeah. Well, that's exactly it, because, you know, we'll sit in a room and we'll be talking about the latest on Gigi or whatever band she's seen, and it usually ends up with me just walking out. I can't talk with her about it because it's hitting a wall. I mean, I can't understand her love of degradation. She loves to be degraded as a woman, and I don't understand that. I don't understand how you can love a guy that wants to pull you by the hair up on the stage and make you, you know, do whatever he wants There's to do to you. Nothing degrading about that at all. Well, I don't feel like. Well, I'm, let's hear from Liz. Okay, I could see that you would think not, but Liz, what do you think about it? I don't it? feel like I'm being degraded. I've never. And she's not. Had anything, you know, personally done to me or but said to me But isn't it offensive that, that he's doing it to somebody else? I mean, how can you sit there and say, "Well, he's never hurt me. Some Screw everybody else that he's me. hurting." I mean, I, I think that you nobody know, deserves rape. Nobody I deserves didn't. rape. Nobody asks for that. I didn't say people deserve rape. It's what? People deserve to be degraded. And you people know, deserve to be degraded? Yeah, they yes, do. they do. Because this is whoever is the it's the survival of the fittest. Well I like to know what By the way, it's only because society doesn't really believe in that that you're protected. Do you understand that? I'm not protected. In other words, because we have respect for laws and because we Let have politeness in our thing, society, Jerry. Let me tell you one thing, Jerry. We don't do anything to you. I got to tell you one thing that's really bothering me. I went to prison for two years yes. for what I did to a girl, and she did the same thing to me. But because she was a girl, they let her off and put me in prison because she was the weaker sex. Now, if women want equal rights, they got to do equal time. Okay, I cut her, I burned her, I drank her blood. But she also did the same to me. It yeah. was a consensual agreement, well, but in the courtroom, they said that I was to blame because I'm Gigi Allen. Okay. I'm the king of the underground. They need to nail me to a cross. And okay, well, you'll forgive me if I don't take sides in that particular dispute. Right, but I just... Uh, I'd like to know what kind of parents you had and what was your upbringing like? I don't blame my parents or anybody from my past for who I am. If anything, I'm grateful for it. What was it like, though? It did... was very chaotic. For the first 10 years of my life, I grew up in, in the woods in New Hampshire with no running water, no heat, no uh, electricity. And my father was a very violent man, and he would hide things in the yard, and he would hold the kids at gunpoint, and he would kidnap us. But see, that made me sort of a warrior soul at an early age, and that made me the individual. I distanced myself from people, and that's what makes me strong, because I don't... I don't have to deal with anybody. I'm really content with being myself. Yeah, but that's the thing. I mean, I don't understand where this has come you from. You wouldn't understand. Because Nobody would expect you to understand. she was never degraded as a child. She wasn't beaten. She wasn't sexually molested. She wasn't verbally abused. And all of a sudden, kabang, beat me, love me, rape me. Maybe I mean, that's I don't get... Oh, where did it come God. from? Well, What's wrong well, with why? people? Beat people pay for that kind me? of thing. Yeah, yeah, people pay to get beaten. People you pay want? to get raped. But why? They could ra she could rape me if she wanted to. Then I wouldn't have to pay for a prostitute to do Liz, it. Liz, what, what is wrong? Why do, why do you 
Why do you say what Sarah said was because wrong? Because I don't have that philosophy about myself. I don't put on a tape and I'm like, yeah, me. I don't, that is not it at all. I can listen to it because I can deal with it. These and people over here would rather shelter their kids. They would rather censor them. They would rather keep them from the real world. And those are the very people that stalkers, world, Gigi. people say, yes, I you am. What you, see at, my, what you see at my show, you'll see You're on the streets. The real world. You'll see what's no. happening in urban America, not in no. Thailand, John. You are, you are a nightmare. You, you are, are a nightmare. nightmare. You're not the real you world. A nightmare. You don't even know what rock not. and roll is. I like no. to ask Mr. Gigi Allen, how do you hurt people and say that they deserve it? I mean, uh, because what kind of human being are you? It'll make them stronger. If I hurt somebody, chances are they're going to be much more defensive. If somebody comes and beats the out of me, if somebody comes at me the second time, it's not going to happen. Yeah. My question is, um, do you have a, do you have sisters or a mother? Yeah, I was born. Okay, if you have, Must if you, have a mother. If you want to go, you're real that. pompous. But no, if you not. have a daughter, would you want someone? I treating, have a daughter. Would you want someone doing that to if her? She's gonna. She's gonna have to be a strong little girl. I do not take sides on this. If if whatever happens to her, she's got to be strong about it. If she gets raped, I hope that she can be stronger about it. People don't get stronger after rape. Yes, they do. They, they feel sorry for themselves. And they're going to okay. get raped again right. because they've got no power. We're not going to, obviously, we're not going to convince him. Uh, but, Dad, um, you're sitting there between your two daughters who, i got to think, you love equally. What's going through your heart right now listening to, you know, listening to Liz? What's bothering me the most now is remembering how it came to be. And, and Liz was, a, still is, an achieving young lady. She goes to a good school, gets honor roll grades, uh, articulate, well-read. She's not a, a punk trash head. That's, that's just absolutely... However, you're, you're telling us now that, so, that because they listen to my well, music that they're punk and trash? No, so I, there I'm, are professors right, okay. that listen to my music. All right, let him go on. So what's bothering me is how did it come to pass that she identifies with this now? And if, as a parent, I say to other parents, I remember when, when it was heavy metal. Okay, and heavy metal was okay. And heavy if, metal is lame. If the guys had their bottles of Jack Daniels and their marijuana, that was okay. They're, gonna, they're harmless. The kids aren't using it. If they're having their concerts yeah, and are. bars, well, that's all. And we just let them go and let them go and let them go until we're just letting them slide to the point where now it's absolutely no limit when rape and uh, degradation and defecation well, are part of a rock and roll show. Well, what... what when did, so what you're saying it was gradual? It was gradual. Okay, why did it happen to one daughter and not another? Because you probably drove her away. Okay, let's hear from Dad. <laughs> I can't explain what happens between two siblings and, and one decides to take a certain road and another decides uh, another one. But Liz, how do you feel sitting in between this guy who you enjoy his music, but he's talking like that to your dad? Is that, I mean, the music aside right now, is there no special kind of bound? Fine between you and your father that you know hey I like your music but you're an entertainer you don't talk no, to I'm my dad like that. My dad is here because he wants to argue with G.J. Allen I mean he's not here because you know G.J. Allen didn't meet him on the street and start arguing with him first of all. Second of all you know he's here and he knows what G.J. Allen's about so I think he can deal with it from that standpoint. He's not you know you can't say. I'm not afraid of him. Well I know. That's stupid for you to start well, it's not. It's. It, well, I can't believe we're different circumstances. I can't believe we're wasting this much time even Maybe dealing with be. this subject. This is something that's getting. He says here he wants to be here. He wants to do this. I'm, I'm doing what I want to do. You said he's not making much do. money. And, don't, and I hope don't, to God don't, he doesn't make don't don't money. Don't pass your poor okay. morals and values upon me. I'm not doing what I want to do. If when I hurt people, so yes. Yes. maybe I'll hurt yeah. you. You're you're in, you're entitled to have your views. What you are not entitled to do in our society is impose your views on somebody else. But people pay. People pay to see what they want to see. Don't okay. we have freedom? If people pay to see me do this, why should the police come in and arrest me over 52 times? People want to see it. And we, you know what? We as a society, and you are not the majority, we each get one vote. And we as a society have decided that we would like a law in our, in our land. And the law we would like to have is that people shouldn't rape other people. Simple but it's law. Case involving two young men who killed themselves after listening to a record by a rock group. Well, up next, we'll meet the lawyer who represented one of the families, and he says parents must take a stand against people like Gigi. Please stay with us. Why didn't I kill myself sooner? Why didn't you kill yourself? Why? Because I didn't want to kill you.
Please meet attorney Ken McKenna. Ken is the lawyer for Ray Belknap's family, one of the two boys who shot himself after listening to a record by the rock group Judas Priest. At this moment, they are trying to appeal the case. Ken, briefly uh, tell us what happened and its impact on what we're talking about today. Um, two boys, um, just under 20 years old, after listening to some Judas Priest music, they were, they were worshippers of Judas Priest, and I think that's the key word. Uh, you get to the point where not do you, you don't just listen to the music, you don't just get entertained by it, but you believe it's a call to action. And uh, the song is uh, explicitly about killing yourself as a solution to teenage problems. Uh, it has subliminal content in it that uh, commands people to do it. Uh, this was found to be the fact in the courtroom that the subliminals existed. And we believe the kids actually carried out this command uh, based on kind of a combination of a desire to follow their leader, the, the band, and, <clears throat> and the subliminal effects on the subconscious. Um, but that, that can go too far, though, can't it? I mean, at some point, we've got to say people are responsible for their own actions, and you can't blame what people do on a song. I agree totally. Totally. And I think my concern and my interest in being here today is not for the adults and the people who've had an opportunity to experience some life and to acquire what you just said, some logic, some responsibility for their own actions. But a lot of times we're dealing with very young, uh, susceptible kids. Uh, heavy metal band followers, typically, uh, the majority of them are kids that come from uh, disrupted families. Maybe they're not doing too good in school. Maybe they're experiencing uh, drug and alcohol I think that's uh, a cop-out attitude. And these kids are that easily manipulated. That's, that's so full of is it? Is it? Rob it's Halford, let me tell you one thing about Judas Priest. I don't believe those kids would worship Judas Priest because Rob Halford is hell, no leader, let me tell you. Would he be willing to kill himself? You have said, you have said on that very subject. That's right. I'm that willing to plan, kill myself. You plan yes, to commit suicide on the stage. Right. But I tell you, and I'll tell you one thing too. a lot of time but i tell you what when they announce it on the news i'm gonna do that i'm gonna do a dance in front of the tv jerry needs to come and take well i won't do it until i'm absolutely ready and i'll make sure that uh, a lot of people uh, suffer before it happens 80, 80 year old rock and roll guys let me tell you yeah. one thing about kids Why who do, do I commit think I'm suicide. At a professional wrestling. It's, a, it, it's a cop out. It's a cop out because let me tell you, maybe they, their parents, maybe they should have killed their parents. Maybe they're in self defense because maybe their parents drove them to do that. Did you ever think of that? Uh, no. You, you said something about professional wrestling. Uh, as long as television, and no offense, your show is excellent, but as long as television showcases this kind of crap. Well, then, that's your then, opinion. Well, no, it is my opinion, and if you want to do it, that's fine. But as, as long as television is or, but the or thing whatever is, is going to showcase it, understand. then people this is either not have to a show. Listen this to me, man. Real. This hey, is how I listen? am. This is how I dress on the street. Do you ever listen to people? I don't need to listen to somebody like you. Saying. I can tell I don't like you just by looking at you. Well, <laughs> go ahead. Go. I'm crushed. I'm crushed. Um, all I'm saying is, if you want to do it, that's fine. Uh, but. You know, the, as long as we keep absolutely, as long as we keep doing, as long as we keep giving him the come. press, then he's going to do it, and he's going to have his idiot followers doing it. No, you're the idiot. Be, yeah. You're the idiot. Right. My followers are not idiots. We believe in real rock and roll. Yeah. You're the idiot, pal. Don't defame rock you and, and roll by calling what you do rock and roll. It's a show you what? put on. No, it's it not ain't rock a and show, roll, Jerry. It ain't a Go show. Ahead. This is how I live. You see me on the street, I'm not going to be any different. This is not a costume. This is how I live. When I go home, I cut myself. It's an uplifting experience. Okay. Self-mutilation. What warning do you have? You're a father. You. What about your kids? What warning do you have for parents out there who, you know, the kids are going to see this. The kids, he is right about one thing. The kids know about him, okay? So it isn't like all of a sudden on television we're revealing something that kids don't know about. Kids know about him. What kind, and it's important that the parents get to see, which is why he's on the show, what do you say to other parents? Because we all have teenagers and they want to go and see rock concerts. We all did. You got to talk to them before they're teenagers. And uh, there you go. my own experience, you know, I didn't know too much about all of this until I got involved in the case. And it sure opened my eyes uh, in terms of how dangerous it is out there. 
The people that are teaching our children are not just in schoolrooms and churches and at home. These people are on stages and they're in concerts and they're on We're record albums. We're teaching them a hell of a lot more you than see, you're teaching them in your schools. They are teaching them messages that we probably wouldn't agree with if we understood or knew what the message but was. But let's draw we a line here. Let's out. draw a line because, you know, let's, let's not all be too saintly here. The fact is we all had parents that said, hey, you're not going to the Beatles concert. You see how they cut their hair, man? That's so long. You're not going to be like that. That'll be the end of the world. And we're not going to show Elvis Presley dancing below the hips. Elvis Presley appears on De Ed Sullivan, and you were not allowed to show the camera below his hips because an entire young generation would be, would be uh, corrupted by his gyrating hips while he sang. So you know what? After a while, the kids are pretty smart. And you, we can tell them just talking to Liz for a few minutes. She's a very bright woman. It, but it's my not guess even, is she's not going to get in trouble. It's not even a matter of corruption, though. It's a matter of him wanting to hurt other people. That's the issue at hand. It helps other people. That's insane. That's insanity. I'm not a follower of Gigi. I've never heard of his music. I would buy one. I do not see anything wrong, and he does. There are exit doors at concerts, too. Exactly. I mean, if someone wants to go, and they don't know what it's about, and they go, there's always an exit door at the concert. Absolutely. Right. That's just the way I see it. I, I mean, mean, I you... listen to music. I listen to uh, you know, music that some people do not follow. And about the TV part, too, I mean, America is so, there's so much censorship here, it's just, it's not even funny. Censorship should begin at well, the home, though. That's where it we should... all say there's so much censorship, but I, uh, help me out here. I don't know. I don't know many concerts that, many movies that don't get shown. I don't know many concerts that get shut down. The fact of the matter is that he does have his concerts. I mean, this argument about there's so much censorship in America, uh, you know, we just all keep repeating it. The truth of the matter is, in most areas of entertainment, there is not censorship. I'm not saying there aren't battles to shut it down, but most of those battles are, are lost. I remember in Cincinnati just uh, last year or two years ago with the Maplethorpe ex exhibit, there was an attempt to shut it down. The attempt ultimately failed. So I just don't buy this fact that here in America we suppress all messages. So we what's don't. So the attitude with everybody that, uh, oh, you know, kill yourself it's and listen not to him? You know, if you are so much for, you know, freedom of speech and freedom of expression, then let him do it. Don't go. Don't buy his records. Don't, you know, your kids are listening to it, you know, whatever. But I don't think the fight is so much against what he sings or what he, what the act. I think well, it gets to the point where you cross the line from the message to what you, the act, to what you're doing. And when you glorify, in a sense, when you glorify the rape of women, the degradation of human beings, that is not something that we as a society want to promote. There are always going to be people going to his shows, buying there his records. There is a sign on and the door when you come in to my show that says, enter at your own risk. I have songs out called, I'm a rapist, I'm going to rape you, I'm going to kill you, and people know when they come to my show that it's a dangerous situation and that's the excitement. If they get hurt, I've had people leave my shows with broken bones and write me letters saying it was the greatest thing they've ever seen in their life. And that's a fact. And I get 50, 60, 70 letters a week. Nobody said everybody's sane. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. To Liz's father, I feel that you should take authority and try and make your daughter stop saying that. That is your house. Well, You're I supposed to be in charge. It's too late. And <laughs> no, it's not too late. Yes. She's underage. Not you can much. stop it. The message should be from for parents to start at age 10, 11, 12, or somewhere yeah. around there. I, mean, I got a question afraid, for, for and him. Don't be afraid as a parent to take some control and some charge. I was hey. trying to be a buddy. And, and a friend, oh, sure, go do this, go do that. She was at my show when she was 13 years old. Where were you? I was believing her. I yeah. was believing her that she was doing something other than what well, she was you doing. Were a fool. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. you're Gigi, right. But I I'm learning fast. I got something to say to you. You know, you say to each his own with your music. That's your business. What you're talking about, you hit people and you hurt people. And they like it. And they like it. You come and hit me, you will be out. I don't think so. I don't think so. Gigi, I love you. <laughs> All right. 
questions for Gigi. Christian man. Sir, if a woman's at your concert and chooses to leave through an exit door because she didn't realize she may be getting raped, are you going to let her leave? Are you going to rape her? It depends on if I can get there quicker than she can. I wanted to say that Liz's father earlier said that rape does not make you stronger. Who the hell are you to talk about what it does to you? I was raped when I was 15, and let me tell you, I'm a hell of a lot of a stronger person now than I was then. Yeah, but you are are you? Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to get raped So you're recommending, him? with cleaning up the language here, you're recommending that, that it's a good idea to be raped? No, I'm saying if, if you don't want it to happen, don't go to a show. I would go to a show, and if he tried to do it to me, I'd beat the out of him. I mean, I, exactly, as a matter of fact, exactly. as a matter of fact, all right. I, have been, I have been stabbed. I've had a girl stab me at a show one time. And that was okay, too, you because... You make yourself strong. And if you don't, you know... <laughs> you know, all right, settle down. My question is for Gigi. Um, were you ever raped as a youngster? Um, I was physically... I was raped by the uh, United States judicial system, as a matter of fact. Oh. <laughs> For doing something with a female, when well, she did the same thing to me and she didn't go. I was raped, yes. Maybe not physically, but hey, I will pay for it. So, anybody want to rape me? Come uh, right on, I, let's can go. I make, can I make yeah. a point? Gigi, I like it. Yeah. Well, I, get, yeah. I got a quick one. Gigi, you've been arrested 52 times. Are these mainly assault charges or like public decency type uh, things? It was indecent exposure, disorderly conduct, inciting a riot, uh, endangering the lives of my audience, indecent to minors, assault and battery, felonious assault, attempted murder. And so on and so on and so on. So what you're on. saying is, what you're saying is this. What I'm saying is, is that the law has no business to come into my show and yeah. tell me what I can and cannot do on that stage when people are paid to see it. That's what we're going to do. Yes. That's, that's exactly the point. You know, free speech is a wonderful right in this country, and we all got to treasure it. And there are going to be extremes, and not all of us are going to like it. And that's the nature of it. But what he does, the physical contact, the crimes, are not protected under the First Amendment. You can't go in a bank and rob it and sing, I've been working on a railroad, and say I'm not a bank you robber. You can if you don't get Crime. money back in a moment. Yes. Um, I'd like to know, do you think you're a human being? I'm a human animal. Well, how can you? It seems like you have no. It seems like you have no compassion for your fellow man. I how can no you do things that are so inhuman to people? I don't believe in compassion. I don't believe in relationships. They weaken you. They make you vulnerable. I put everything that I obtain back into number one. I'd like to know if they use drugs very heavily. Oh well, it's not in this. You don't have to necessarily use drugs to be an ally in the G.G. Allen army, but uh, it's okay if you do. <laughs> Yeah, I'd like to know, is, is is this strictly just at your concerts that you do this, or would you do this to it, someone out on the it street? It bleeds out. I mean, it's really a therapeutic thing for me on stage because I keep so much built up inside. But if I go for long periods of time where I don't do shows, then, yeah, a lot of it will come out of me in, in, in an everyday situation, and uh, it won't be a pleasant sight for somebody to be around. What, what would you have been if you had not been a, a performer? I could have possibly been a serial killer or a mass murderer. Oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm, well, I, let's, I, let's try and keep his concert career going, gang. Huh? What I would like to say, uh, say is that she was 13 years old when she went to his concert. I like to see children get protected from animals like that guy. I let you have that choice. I, I connived my way to go or whatever, you know, and I get, got into the show by myself and went there and saw it, stayed for the whole thing and left with the satisfaction of doing it. I chose, nobody said, oh, this is cool, do it. You know, I have a mind of my own, I always have. And There's an important point there. The, the people who allow him to perform in these clubs, these are commercial establishments, and they're the ones that are going to be subject to the civil liability when somebody gets hurt. So popularizing him by letting him perform at your commercial establishment, you should be on notice that so, you're going to so get the sued owner, the... by, by a gentleman like this who is going to sue no, you for the damage caused they... to his daughter. And I don't care about your stupid they sign waivers release. when they come into the that show. That waiver isn't worth well, the paper it's written paper. on. Either. You ain't oh, worth no nothing. Because nobody you, cares about your opinion to I'll come to my show. I'll pay for you in a courtroom and the establishments that you perform okay. in, and they'll care. Well, I we'll just, see, won't we? I can't we hear will. her. 
Excuse what me. What state are you in? You won't I, be here in a what year. What state are you in? We're in Illinois I'll right now. Hold on. What state is he in? I'd like to say that. I know that's the problem. You don't know what state we're in. Let me hear. What state is he in? Because I'm going on tour and I'm a fan of G.J. Allen's for a long, long time, and he's. He's totally popular, and I, it's like it, there's a need for it. I mean, well, people, tell me what the need is, and I'm, I'm not being smart here. Tell me, what, what do you think the need is? There's for a need for, just like there's a need for prostitutes and S and M clubs, Honey, and I feel sorry bars. For you. And, no, I don't feel, feel sorry, sorry for me. For no, I feel sorry you for you. Have such low self-respect. Yeah, That's I have low self-esteem. Yeah, absolutely not. No, no, I mean, what about? Bishops and I all these priests myself. getting uh, arrested for being a pedophile and all this stuff. And I mean, I think that, I mean, I think one of the biggest fans would, of G. G. Allen's would probably be Harold Washington, and who's the president Hoover. I mean, all those people were just like the same thing. Is there, is there, <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. This is, for Hoover hasn't been mentioned in a long time. I'll admit that. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Your free tickets to the Jerry Springer Show in Chicago. Write Jerry Springer Tickets. Post Office Box 4115, Chicago, Illinois, 60654. Or call 312 321 5365. Yes. I'm responding to Liz, a statement that she had made earlier that her father's here to pick a fight with JJ. I'm here, I'm here to tell you. Your father's here because he loved you. He loved you enough to trust you at 13, and he loves you enough to help you yeah. through this crisis. I'm, if it's JJ, not a crisis. if JJ had had Gigi, 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 excuse the more. JJ down if south. JJ, if JJ, if Gigi had had the same love the same family support that your father and sister are giving you. I question whether or not he would be maybe running for president or senator or something more positive she and constructive. She probably will anyway. You know, you have to understand, I mean, I, you know, I love him too, and I respect him for everything that he does, and, you know, the fact that he doesn't respect me for what I do is a different I do, story. I don't like well, this aspect I know that, I know that, that's what I'm saying. And, um, you know, I'm in no way corrupt for the rest of my life. I'm not anything and you know I I'm an educated person. I know a lot of things and I don't have respect for yourself. Yes, I do have respect for myself. Okay. I you don't have respect for yourself. No, that's not the grade. Hit the women and kick them. That's disrespectful. Listen, I listen to you don't I know. But you don't believe that he would do until it's done to you. You would not feel the same way that you do I'm now. So what life is disrespectful. In this room. You still got to live it. Life I'm not is gonna disrespectful. Let him take any respect so, away from me. So you telling me it's okay if I just raped you, or do it just have to be him? Um, <laughs> I mean, no. I mean, if she comes to my show and she gets raped or hurt, chances are when you come along, she'll be ready for you. Oh. Oh. Come on. I'm doing her. I hope you I'm doing her a favor. Jail, I wish you'd go to jail. I think yeah, you need longer, to go to jail. I have a question for Liz. It's, uh, it's obvious an ignorant that you, attitude. It's obvious that you worship this man. I was wondering, what would you do? Or how would you feel if this man raped you, uh, pulled your hair, dragged you on the stage um, while you went, while you were attending well, one of his concerts? Well, first of all, I wouldn't say I worship him because I, you know, have a mind of my own and I don't, not a blind follower of anything. But um, if he tried to rape me, well, I'd probably beat it or something um i don't know yeah well I, what if he didn't hey well i'm just saying i'm just saying it'd be you know, a hell of a fight i don't want it from him <laughs> and um what if that I, would happen to you you know let me just let me close that. i want to ask one question it. here yeah and i guess most of us are intrigued with liz uh the people watching who have There are a couple of things you should know about the program you're about to watch. Our first guest, Gigi Allen, has been called the most violent man in rock and roll. Some of what you're about to hear may not be suitable for children. Also, four nights after Gigi Allen taped this broadcast, he gave his last concert here in New York. As usual, his performance was fraught with the onstage violence that had become his trademark. The next day, Gigi Allen was found dead. A police investigation is underway into the cause of his death, but a drug overdose is suspected. What follows is Gigi Allen's last interview. Parental discretion is strongly advised. This rock musician says he has more power over your children than you do. I have such a, a fierce, intense 
fire burning inside. I mean, it just was, it was so much that just wants to explode. Gigi Allen brags he's on his way to becoming the leader, the messiah for America's youth. He already claims to have a million followers. Wherever he goes, he plays to sell out crowds. And this is what they see. Concerts filled with violence, bloodshed, and sexual assault. Gigi Allen wants to lead America's young people in a bloody revolution to take over the country. And he says nothing can be done to stop him. Why is that, Gigi? Nobody will stop you because I am the true underground messiah. When you come to my show, you're going to a war. And I'm out for violence, chaos, un lawlessness all the way. I don't care about anybody or anything except for myself and my mission. And your kids out there, if you've got kids out there, they're going to be my kids. I'm going to own those kids. They're going to do anything that I say. And why is that? Why do they do anything you say? Because I'm the king. And they can identify with me because the real, true, nonconformist children in this country are sick and tired of their parents, their school, their people force-feeding them what to do. I am the answer. When they listen to my lyrics and they listen to my songs, they're listening to the way okay. that it really should be. And you know that, and I know that, so don't brain because your kids are my kids all right let me i don't mean any disrespect here i had never heard of you before we were going to do this show okay and i did a lot of reading about you all right now i want to know is this you seriously mean what you're saying absolutely this is not i've act. been doing this ever since i was a child i have been this is what you see is what you get i do this when i wake up tomorrow morning i'll still smell the same way i'll still look the same way this is not a show this is not an act i am that guy now do you okay do you honestly believe yes. that you're a charismatic figure I believe that I am the king. I am the messiah. I rule the rock and roll and underground. I'm bringing us to a revolution against the government, against the police, against any form of society that is trying to put us down and restrict us in any way, shape, or manner. You cannot conform. You must be a true nonconformist. To hell with what your parents have to say. Okay, okay. I am the man. Okay. So all you have to do is listen to what I have to say. Okay, well, who told you you were the Messiah? I said I was. Okay. And I am because these kids, I get letters from all over the world. People worship me. They come to my shows. I'm going to rape the girls. I might rape the guys. I might have sex. I'm, I want it all. I want it all, and I'm going to have it all. Okay, let me ask Because I am everything. All right, yeah. You uh, you go way beyond sex, drugs, and rock and roll in your performances. You uh, self-mutilate on, on I stage. I self-mutilate. I beat the s*** out of my audience. If they're in my way, I take them out. I don't care. I don't care about anybody or anything. When you come to my show, I'm the boss. I'm the king. You do what I say. You can challenge me. I have no problem with yeah. that. I, I like the confrontation. Yeah. But you're going to lose. All right, do you... Are you, are you proud of what you do? Absolutely proud of what I do. Why are you proud of what you do? Because I am who I am, and I'm not a phony like everybody else out there. I am real. And I, how many of you can, at 35 years old, sleep with 16, 12, 13-year-old girls and boys and animals? Hey, this is the life. I got it all. And I got your kids. You worried about him, audience, or what? Yeah? No, you better be. How many of you aren't worried? How many of you think this is so ridiculous your kids would never buy you're, into well, it? You're, Okay, right. well, come on. Come on, I'll take you on. Well, don't run right, right now. Come on. All right, simmer down. Come simmer on down. down. Simmer down. We'll simmer see, down. won't we? All right. It sounds like you, I mean, it sounds like you're real angry. I've been angry since day one. I knew the yeah, day well, I why, was born. Why are you so angry? I just hate everybody. There's no need for me to like everybody. Everything that I have in this world, I put back into number one. I am number one. I don't need to give anything to anybody. You don't need to give anything back. I don't need to give anything back. I take it all. All right, why, do you know why you have so much hatred? I have so much hatred because I look at these people, these robots, these these conformists, these people that dress in their uniforms, and I'm sick and tired of it. What are you wearing? What is this that? This is not a uniform that's for not me. A uniform? You could say it's a uniform. I could say that's a uniform. So I got a but uniform. This is, you what I would, a uniform. No, this is what I wear every day. If you see me tomorrow anywhere in Manhattan, you'll see me wearing yeah. this, and probably a whole lot less because you people wouldn't let me take my clothes off. I'd rather be out here naked. This is a good decision. It does not matter. All right. Yeah. This is real, and it's very important that people know that their kids are my kids, and I'm going to teach them, right. and you can't have them back. You've repeated yourself on that. Well, one, I'll okay? repeat it again All until right. you get it right. I want to get new information. We have limited time here. Um, do you what care? Do you, want? About, do you care about anything? I don't care about anything but myself, and what I write and what I do is law. How many times have you been in jail? I've been in jail. I've been arrested over 52 times. I've spent three years in prison. Uh, 
what's your ultimate idea of a, of a performance, of a fantasy performance? All of it's not a fantasy performance, Jane. Come on, everything I do is real. It comes out of my head. Well, what's your I live this life every day. When I'm on stage, it's my therapy. It's not a performance. It's a ritual. And the ultimate performance would be when I have reached my peak, and I'm not there yet. So don't you all clap when I say this. I'll commit suicide, but I'll take your kids with me. What does that mean? You'll take you, take our it kids means with what you. you. Whatever I just said, I'll take them with me. Well, what's it mean? Doesn't it mean make I'll any kill sense. them too if I have to, or they may kill themselves. When you reach your peak, it's time to die. And when do you think your peak's going to be? Whenever the battle is over, yeah. whenever you have lost the power to fight. When you have got the power to fight, you fight. When you lose the power, you kill yourself or I'll kill you. Are you a happy person? I'm beautiful. <laughs> He's happy. All right, let me let me just... All right, how many of you, we have some of your fans in the audience, uh, identify yourselves here. Anybody? <coughs> yeah, just, I didn't want to guess, okay? Stand up for me here. Uh, what, what's his appeal as you see it? Well, I'm his brother and I'm the bass player in his band, the Murder Junkies. Are you are his brother, for yeah. real? Yeah. And, Your brother? You know, I, I just, I just think that touring with Gigi is is a great experience because it's you don't go on stage, you don't do the same thing night after night like most of these lame ass boring bands. You get up there, you're gonna see something different and something new and something exciting every night. And you believe Whether in the somebody gets beat up or sent to the hospital hey, what is this or about prison beating people or whatever. Up? What is it's, about a, great, it's a war out there. What's you know? a war? Do you see these people beating each other up in the audience? Well, well we beat them up problem. afterwards. <laughs> Wait a minute. Okay, thank you very much. What? Well, it's the, it's the whole confrontation. See, a lot of people come to my shows expecting a freak show, and they get caught up in the crossfire because they don't realize that what goes on in my mind is very real. And if they're in my way, and if I see somebody there that's just there to see the freak show, then they're, then they're going to be taken out. The only people that are left in my are my allies who are standing at the end of the show. Those who have been sent to the hospital, those who have been raped or left or ran out the doors, they're the enemy. The people who stay are the allies right. of which we you, take on and we will rule. You mentioned this rape thing. If you were really a rapist, I mean, you'd be in jail for a lot longer How do you than three know? years. How do you know? Just a guess. I don't... I get girls to give me what I want. This is... But this is... I then have, why is that rape? They're consenting to give you sex. They're consenting, but I have had women on stage that weren't consenting, and I don't care. I will continue to have those women. Well, I'll I pull them up I... on stage. Well, say what you want. But you can... All right. I have raped women on stage, and I've raped men on stage. I've had women come on stage and, and, and suck my <laughs> and, and whatever I wanted them to do, because I'll just take them up there. Um, if you're so proud of what you do, why don't you get the hat and the sunglasses, you know, you'll never, I, yes, I'll never I can look you right in the eye and to say, anybody. I go to school so I can tell people. So I don't care, so you go to school, you go to school, wow, yeah, well, where do you go to learn person. in school? You ain't going to learn nothing in school, because I'm the only Not one that like can teach you. Take your hat off and sit back down. I'm the only one that can teach you. You can't teach me, I am the Savior, I am the God. And I'll look you straight in the eyes. And I'll tell you that, because I am the Do God. me a favor, would you sit, would you sit, all right, you're not on mic back there, sit down for me. What do you really think is so special about you? I'm a very unbelievable person because I believe in myself, and I have a very strong mind, and I can get anything that I want. And most people go through life very bland and very boring, and they accept what's given to them. They accept what people teach them and what people tell them. I have said no over and over again to authority. Authority cannot tell me what to do. The schools cannot tell me what to do because from day one, I never listened to them. I taught myself. I'm strong. I'm very strong. And, and I'm very proud of the if person so that strong, I am. Because, then, then why do you want to go down in flames and peak out when, at an early when, age? My peak because I don't want to die a boring death like all of you people will probably do. I'm going to live to the maximum capacity. Right. And when I reach my capacity, go down in flames. Why do I want to get old and get boring? Is this what happens? You get old, you get boring? I didn't even well, know. Well, most people do. There's no age. I'm not setting, I'm not setting an age limit yeah. on it. I'm saying when you reach that peak, there's no age. But you immediately assume... Some people reach their peak at 10. Some people reach their peak at 40. Okay. You immediately... Uh, you assume that all of us out here are boring people. Is that your assumption? I assume that just by looking at most of you, you probably are. All right. <laughs> but after you reach your peak and you commit suicide, you're going to go to hell and you're going to live a miserable life. How do you life. know that? I'm going to live forever because my soul's too short. But I know you're going to go to hell you're and live a miserable life. You're the one that's going to go to nowhere land, baby, because <laughs> I'm going to live forever. My soul is too strong. Wait a second. 
All right, let When me... you die in your peak, you can't die. Your soul cannot die when you die in your peak. All right, wait a minute. You're wearing me out here, Gigi. Uh, what, is it, what do you think motivates this guy, folks? Who's got an answer to that question? All these ludicrous people that listen to him, those are the people that motivate him. Because if ludicrous people wouldn't be listening to him, no, then he would have no reason weakling, to be weakling, with him. Weakling. You are okay? nothing. You I'm are a that weakling. I want to live until I'm 80 years old. I mean, you're I that big. I want to live until I'm 80 years old. But you're that small with mentally. With my kids, I want to see great-grandchildren and everything, okay? And my kids will never follow you because your I'm kids Hispanic will be right on to and this. we don't listen to none your of your... Will, yeah. okay? And you might be too. You're not, come on. You're not on microphone. Yeah, okay. Next, we're going to meet two 17 uh, year old girls who are true believers in everything you've just heard Gigi Allen say. They've given up everything to follow him, and they say they do any for anything for him, even die. We'll be back. <laughs> As to whether Gigi Allen says he really intends to go through with his suicide plan remains to be seen. What remains to be seen? Rock musician Gigi Allen sees himself as a savior for America's young people. He says he's training them to carry out a revolution based on destruction and violence. Joining us now are two of his devout followers. Wendy and Liz are both 17, and they say they'd do anything for Gigi Allen. Really? Anything? Yes, I will do anything for Gigi Allen. I will die for him. I will do anything for him. He is my God. He is my daddy, and I will do it all for him. He's your daddy? What's that mean? He is my daddy. He is I've adopted her. When she came out and followed me on the road, I told her, I, I showed her more things than her daddy could ever show her. He is my Literally. daddy. And on Father's Day, what did we do, daughter? On Father's Day, my daddy gave me the great gift of letting me watch him masturbate, and I got in his mouth, and it was the greatest father-daughter experience I've ever had in my life. Do you have parents? I don't care about I them. Who cares? He's my parents. parents. So you have parents, but he's your father. Who needs he, parents? Who cares? Who needs them? He's my only... He's what, my God. Okay, he's my what, daddy. Yeah, I'm hearing a lot of rhetoric here. What I'm not hearing is what his appeal is. What's his appeal? He's the most gorgeous human to walk the face of this earth. He is God. He is the greatest. He understands my my anger. He understands me, and he he teaches me everything I need to know. I don't need anyone but him. I don't need any school. I don't need any government. I need him. That's all I need. And that's all I live for. You know, I, I don't want, I, you know, I don't want to annoy you, but it sounds, you sound like almost like you've been brainwashed by him. You I'm sound not like, brainwashed. I know exactly what I'm saying. I teach these but you, you sound strong. like you've got this, like, but you sound like you have this, like, rap down, and it, does, it sounds like it's his rap. What's it's your not rap? his rap. It's, it's the way I feel, and I it's teach, the truth. I, and anyone who doesn't believe it can just go to hell. I teach them to be strong. I teach them to follow me, but I also t teach them to be strong individuals. Independent strong? In independent strong, but, but my way or the highway. Well, okay, do you feel like you're, do you feel like you're uh, independent? Oh, yeah, I'm completely independent. I, I mean, I have made my own decisions for myself. You know, I got up and I, I quit my job and I left my family, my friends, I sold my car, I left my home to, to be with him and to follow him and to go with him across the country. And, and what spoke to you about him? Gigi is, is, He's a great teacher. He's taught me a lot of things. He's taught me to stand up for myself, and he's given me a lot of positive energy, and he, he's got a lot of power with me. And so you have no other life but him? Not right now, no. I mean, my life is what I'm doing. Do you have a family someplace else? Yeah, I have a family. I hate my family. You hate your, Have you always hated your family? Yeah. I've hated them for a long time. They're negative people. They don't, they don't, they don't help me think better of myself. They only tell me bad things about me. They, you know, they don't say... Anything good to me. They don't teach me to stand up for myself. They teach me to, they shelter me. That's what they want to do. That's why I had to get up and, you know, leave because. And he was the answer for you. That's why yeah. these girls are better off to be with me because if whatever they do or whatever happens to them when they're with me won't happen to them with anybody else. Well, if they I hang was, out with you, they could wind up in jail, couldn't they? They could wind up in jail. They could wind up in a hospital too. But now that wouldn't but, bother uh, you? Or are you saying, Liz, that that wouldn't bother you? To wind up in a hospital? Or jail? Or jail? No, it wouldn't bother me. If I'm doing what I want, 
If they end up in jail, jail's, jail's only going to make you stronger anyway. Putting somebody in jail is not going to slow them down. I've been in jail many, many times, as you well know. Every time they put me in jail, every time I come out that much stronger, because all I have to do is sit in there and reload the gun and plot for the next target that I will come in front of. Because it makes me much more violent when what, I go back. What do you think What do you think is going to happen to your life? What do you see yourself doing? I feel that very soon there will be another Holocaust and it will be led by Gigi. And and we're going to destroy the world and we're going to create violence. And, and all your children are going to turn against you and they're going to follow Gigi and they're going to follow us. And we're going to just lead everyone straight to hell and we're just going to be the leaders of the universe. And anyone who doesn't follow us is going to die. <laughs> then I guess you're not going to your senior prom. <laughs> Right. right now, we, me and Gigi are going across the country, and we're going to, you know, screw with people, and we're going to, you know, take what we want, and we're going to do what we want. And you're, everybody here... Life is too short yeah. to, to, to wait well, for you know, things to happen. You can take them. You, you can get whatever good, you want. You bring up want. a good point. There's so much misery in the world already. Why would you just sex This is violence? not misery to us. This is what violence? we want to do. We're taking what we want to do. Beating you people, people always dream about what you want. I'm doing what I want. I've had sex with these girls. This is... Yeah. You know, that's okay. fine. I can get what I want. I can have what I want because I can take it. Do you have what you want, really? Yes, I have what I want, but I'm going to have a whole lot more. All right. Now, the sex and violence doesn't bother you. No, not at all. I'm, I, love, I love to be violent with people. You do? Yeah. I hate people. You hate people? I hate people. All people? Most people. Just on sight, you hate them. Yes, I just hate what, what people stand for. Many people, you know, you stand for all different things, and I hate most of them. They're all robots. They're all controlled by our society. Our society has no right to tell us what we can and cannot do. Okay, audience, what do you think? <laughs> stand up. Uh, any of them on drugs? <laughs> I would be very Are you serious. on drugs? Uh, are you? Are you? I think on you drugs. are. We're, We're on threat. drugs when we choose to be. When but it's not a necessity. We have strong minds. So that means yes. That okay. means when we, we do want what we to want. be. We do drugs if we want to do drugs. We'll rape you if we want to rape you. I don't we'll... know what's responsible. Do you have children? <laughs> right. Do you have children? She's off mic right now. Stand up well, over here. Too bad, cause... We're going to take them down. All of them. My question is to all three of you. You say you're the Messiah. But there is one Messiah and that's God. I am God. And my advice, if you are led by that and God, my advice to do, you are fooled by a false Bible and a false bringing up because there is only one true God and that lives within my me. Advice, I am that God. You can read the Bible, but it's crap. I'll wipe my butt with it. My advice to these two lovely girls, please don't follow this man. Follow Christ. He's all the he, way. They are. I, I am Christ. He I am is. Christ. He's not. I hear all this t talk about free sex. Don't you consider about your HIV status? Who cares? What? My sex life is my business. They can have sex with don't me. Worry and about they it. If they, if they don't there. have a problem with it, why would you have a problem with it? Uh, okay, I know. Yeah, quickly here for me. I know they want to take a break. Yeah. If you're such a god and such a messiah, aside from the three idiots and these two beetles just looking at you, where are all your followers? Where are all your followers? You gotta be joking. Come on. How could you have sex with Look at you. You're the most these horrible beasts. I don't You're understand. You're just stoned because you can't have them. You are. You're a black girl. I'm not saying I'm gonna rape somebody. You're probably very disgusting. This, this is disgusting. All right, all right. So what? No, right. just so what? All right. We can be disgusting. If we want to be disgusting, we can be disgusting. Next, a group of young people known as the club kids who are the consummate pleasure seekers. They work at only one thing, having fun, and that translates into staying out all night, doing drugs, and partying. We'll be back. Talking with rock musician Gigi Allen, who says he's the self-proclaimed messiah of America's youth. Now meet the club kids. They say they don't need a messiah. Walt Paper, Michael, Richie, and Julie have made the pursuit of pleasure into a religion. They are total hedonists who live to stay out all night, do drugs, and party. That's simple, Walt Paper, yes? Yeah, well, basically we get paid to show up at nightclubs run around, even though drugs aren't required, a lot of times they come in contact with what we do because 
I mean, our job is to run around and have fun and be glamorous and look good. And so a lot of times when people run around and have fun, of course, drugs, you know, are a lot of times a part of it, but it's not a major part of it. Basically, our job is entertainers and attractions at nightclubs. Do you get paid to show up at parties like this? Yes. Why? Like this? Why because not? we look like this. Yeah. Oh. Okay. <laughs> because we attract attention, no. you know what I mean? People come and it's just like as if uh, a musician was supposed to show up at a club. People go who appreciate that musician. We have people out there who appreciate So us. you each have a following it's because for... of our sharp wit and personality. Oh, I can <laughs> understand <laughs> that. Our... Well, now, can you make a living at this, Michael? Oh, my God. <laughs> it's easy to make. Well, in New York, you can. Yeah? yeah? It's a lot easier in New York than other cities. A lot of kids from all over the country come to New York Mm -hmm. And write us letters and the, call us and ask us how to become a club kid. We want to be like you. Guys, you give us a job. Are We're kind of like him. In, in, a, yeah. in a different kind of way. Yeah. You know? well, how would you explain that? Well, we, because, just what he said. We're like, like, we're our own Messiah. Yeah. Too, and we, you know, and right. we're, I mean, we, we have a different belief than him, but we, just like he said, I agree. We believe in ourselves and it's all about, you know, uh, but it's yeah. Yeah. And we step yeah. outside of what normal people do. I mean, our exactly. lifestyles are as far from normal and regular as anything else is what he's doing. It's just on a different level. Which you know what I mean? Don't they're, achieve they're more the violence. So we're more annihilators. Right. So right. Yin, uh, his, his, so his, yin and yang, you know. His thing is a little bit more political than ours. Ours is more social. You know, we're and dealing with social right. things in society. Okay, and superficial, things. superficial. There's no redeeming social value. It's to a what you totally do. superficial scene. We're not doing it for political reasons or social reasons. Uh huh. You know, the club kids are there to mm -hmm. have. Fun. We're like an invitation to everybody. It's like you can choose to look at it one way, like to the negative, but it's more the positive. It's like it's a part. It's a dress up party, and everybody's invited. Okay. But, now, do you see yourself as doing this, like you know? 30 years from now? Oh, God, yeah. yeah. I, have or, I mean, we just get better, yeah. you know, and in more demand, you know what I mean? It's because we mean. establish ourselves more with the things that we do, with our outfits, with our looks, and that's how, why we get paid to do what we do. I mean, there's a lot of other people that go to nightclubs and dress up, but not necessarily all of them get paid. You have to reach a certain level. So you're saying you can make a living at this? You file well, a... we do. Uh, hold on. You file a tax return on that sort of stuff? It's a, it's a stepping stone to something else. It's also. like a vehicle to launch different careers. It's like show business, show business, and it's like... We use this as our foundation to this move up to higher things. So some people just choose to just do this. Like this is said. a scene that, gi that gives um, that gives birth to a lot of stars of tomorrow. Mm -hmm. The scene uh, started Delight, the scene started Madonna, ah, RuPaul. RuPaul. A lot of talent comes out from this. They start as club kids and they dress up and have fun to get exposure, to get people noticed. You earn a name for yourself and then Designers. you go on to do something else. If you go on to be a designer, suddenly it's not Joe Smith designing an outfit. It's <laughs> Desi Monster or wallpaper. And exactly. And you'll have an established scene and you'll have a following that will go out and buy those okay, clothes or buy your records or whatever. Is, like dirt, oh, is work a dirty word in your vocabulary? This, believe me, this no. is a ton of work. It is. Oh, so it is yeah. work. I mean, it's, it's not a lot of work. To, it's not you know easy I mean? getting up at four o'clock in the afternoon and well, to the, it's not easy, but TV show. it's different than choosing to like punch in a time clock because it, it's like even if we it, even if we didn't make a living at it, we were doing it before. See, because I, I guess I was misinformed. I heard that a lot of kids with trust funds and kids with rich parents well, did that's this. Well, that's how you start. Oh, that's how you start. I came to New York to go to school and essentially took the money that I was using for school, at least part of it, and started buying my clothes, and that's how you start. You bought this. Yeah. Well, actually, no. I no, just I, I, I didn't it. mean it that way. Let me just, what is, I mean, it looks like an ace bandage. Well, it's actually made by a designer Michael named Michael Schmitt. Oh, my God. Who does God. clothes for oh, Cher. Yes, All right. right. All right. And, but basically, it starts out like that. But once we establish ourselves, then the money starts coming in. We get paid exactly. to show so up. But basically, like, rich once your kids, parents find out what you're doing, the trust fund is it's cut like off. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, but you came from some time. sort of financial cushion, in other words, basically. It, it, it helps to start mm -hmm. out that way. Okay. Then you don't have to move to New York and live in a rat hole, you know. Exactly. Right. All right. You have an like established my, residence, a dorm. You know what I mean? You have a pretty solid setting. Do you think you, this is like a phase you're going through? Well, my mother, oh, let me answer that. <laughs> My brother's a lawyer. My mother always asks me, you know, Richie, are you ready to go back to school yet? And I say, she goes, you know, are you going through some sort of stage or something? <laughs> it's not a stage well, I'm in. It's it a stage I'm on, you know? It is and it isn't. Though. Everybody it's, is going constantly going through stages and phases in their life. And like I said, mm -hmm. it can be a stepping stone to a career or to really whatever you and want plus, it to do. And plus you find that, um, you know, we're just... I don't know. <laughs> All right, look, is your worst nightmare having a boring life? 
Yeah, it should be everybody. That's why, yeah. that's why not everybody just ours. That, when you walk down 34th Street in Manhattan, everybody has this miserable look on their face, like I hate, uh, you know, I hate my life and I hate what I'm doing. I hate being here, and it's because they're not doing what they want to do. Choice. They're you doing what somebody else around. wants. Exactly. Exactly. We've been doing this when we were growing up. I mean, most of right. us when we were growing up, we found ourselves in different scenes, but we were still the weird ones. We were still the freaks. We were still the ones that stood out. It's just now we've gotten over being joked and being the now we're because we're being paid to do what people were originally joking us for. But I don't think we should ju be saying that we're doing it just to get paid. We're, we're trying no, to no, set no, an no. example. I, it's, it's in our heart. It's in our heart. Exactly. Right. What exactly. is the example you're trying to set? To let people know they don't have to follow the rules and not enjoy their lifestyle. Okay, let me just ask the audience. Anybody here inspired to follow, follow the club kids in terms of all pleasure, no work? Uh, we work. What? We work, though. Anybody in the back? Somebody in the back? All right, we're going to find out during the break. We're going to take another There's break. There's a snake over there, I think. I no, know. I don't think so. All right. <laughs> Next, the police officer who warns that America's youth is headed for disaster. He's he says, Gigi Allen and the club kids personify why young people are more violent and self-destructive than ever before. We'll be back. If your spouse has unrealistic or unusual sexual expectations and it's ruining your marriage, please call 1-800-370-2712. Is America's younger generation on a dangerous road to violence and destruction? Police Sergeant Steve Rogers says yes. He says more than ever before, young people are turning violent or spinning out of control. Great. Um, is this an, I don't know, is this an example of what you're talking about? Well, to about? begin with, uh, Jane, David Koresh resurrected here, said that he's real. The fact of the matter is he is real. He's a real sick animal who belongs in the yeah, well, you <laughs> These individuals work on fear and intimidation. Look at the helmet. Anti-Semitism written all over them. You probably want to see. I don't need the helmet. Good. I'm glad you're right in the eyes. And I can say, I still think you're an ass. Glad you just showed me you have no brains. I got more brains in my head than you'll ever I have in ten heads. Your name is Gigi. You no, gotta yeah, change, no, you gotta, you gotta change, change your name. You gotta change your name to no brains, no nonsense, no All right, all right, come here, all right. This is not going anywhere. Just, if you're gonna say excuse me, you talk. Then I'm gonna say. Okay, can I just say something? Just a second. Let me just say something here. You talk. You talk for the whole first segment over ten minutes. Just give him a shot. All right, I'm not telling you what to say. Well, he's not going to insult my intelligence. You got to change right. your initials to ASS before you got to wear You got to change your initials to P.I.P. The next time you spit at me, you're going to have a real problem. You're going to take a break. We'll be back. We'd like to hear from you. Send your letter in care of Jane Whitney, Columbus Circle, Post Office Box 20314, New York, New York, 10023. Back talking with rock musician Gigi Allen, the club kids, Sergeant Steve Rogers. You had some you and I have a comment to okay. make and a question. With the club kids, I could deal with them because I live in the clubs. Limelight, Roseland, mm -hmm. okay? Yes. So I know what type <laughs> of crowd they are. <laughs> but it's those two young girls, I can't understand how they can allow themselves to be brainwashed by... They're not, not brainwashed. brainwashed. Wait, let me finish They're what I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> What's going to happen to you when your so-called messiah disappears? 
We're going Where's with them. Going? You're going with them? Okay, I know. You don't get it. I understand. Uh, Steve, we, you didn't really talk about I mean, she says the club kid, she can deal with the club kid. She does the club scene. I mean, do you have a problem with the way they live? Well, any, anyone, if in fact they are uh, involved with drugs, drug abuse, I don't... I don't condone that. I think that's wrong. I think it's 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 again uh, ruining the moral fiber of our country. What we have here, what we have here, and I, I think this is important to address, <laughs> is a chilling wind sweeping across this nation, whereas these individuals are 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 trying to capture the hearts and minds of young people. Uh, this to me, no, that's what you're trying this, to do. This to me is a complete waste. And no, uh, we are trying, trying to control trying, the minds of young people. One of the problems they want to do. Yeah. One yeah. of the problems they want to take drugs. Look, they all take drugs. One of the problems we have. Where they want, do what they want to. Who are you to say? I happen to be a police officer. Who well, I don't care who you, you are. You belong in prison. You have a problem. I don't have a problem. You belong in prison. You are in prison. Let me tell you something. You are. Because you can't live the way you no, want to I'll condemn do. everybody else this for the guy, way they live. This guy, ladies and gentlemen, is I'm the doing of why exactly. this country is going down. The no, side. we're going and, up. And gonna, we're going up. You're going There's down. something else, Jane, that he said. He said that he's not afraid of anyone. I'm not afraid of you. I'm not afraid of anything. I challenge him right now to what? Go to Harlem. I go to Harlem to walk the streets. Let's go. And if you out your hate, I would. If you're, you don't have the guts to do whatever it takes for me to do. I'll do whatever. You want to go? I'll, I'll ride with you. <laughs> Yay! The Rock Show. You ain't got the balls to come to one of my shows hey, either. Imitation. Why don't you come in to one it's of my shows? You're a state cop. You're a, you're a wannabe cop. I am? You, I'll tell you what. Yeah, you I'm are. Not guys, Jersey. Guys, well, I don't care guys, guys. Well, that's your problem. All right, listen. I'm going to ask you one more time, mind. okay? Well, I know. I know. Nobody gets hurt. Just trust me on that, all right? Uh, you want to say something down here? Let's talk about yeah, I have an opinion. I think that the club kids and Gigi Allen, I'd rather have my kids follow original thought like that than grow up to be like a cop right yeah. here. Yeah. I don't know what with that. And wearing a tasteless suit. Jane, Jane, again, we go back to, to what is fundamentally right. Let's get him. Right. Okay, but, but it is your Okay, hold on a second here. I mean, conforming is one thing, right and wrong is something else. You're talking... Who's to say what is right and wrong? Him? Well, I mean, there are most people, the majority of people, would probably say that beating up on other people and yeah, trashing their heads with a razor. Beating up people on get people, paid to get beaten up. Beating up on people, <laughs> raping people, uh, et cetera, et cetera, is wrong. I don't know what's right in that. Man, it's wrong. It's it's right. Right. What, Michael? You, we have a little pill that this man could take that would change his whole attitude <laughs> on that. <laughs> yes. Oh, Give it to him. Give him an overdose. Uh, I only have two left. <laughs> What now you're like, well, oh, why isn't he busted? Why is he well, open about well, this? Well, obviously, he's taking well, so many pills, his brains are fried. No, this is a tranquilizer. Brains are fried. Open all. Open all. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. <laughs> And this is a prescription. Yeah. So, so this is like, but this is what you do when you're in the clubs, this sort of thing. Well, it makes it, it makes it a lot easier you know. to like handle things. Jane, what we're seeing here is the attempt to glorify the abuse of drugs, yeah. the abuse of people, the spewing of hatred to legitimize this. I don't see anything that's right with that. It's all wrong. Okay. He didn't give more help at all to to promote drug use for everybody in the audience. No, I I I will. I'll tell bit. you who I am. All right. You are nobody to tell us what we can and cannot year, do. You live your life, and we'll live ours. I'll give you a perfect illustration of what I mean. Last year, I happened to be on an attorney general's task force to Israel. To Israel. Oh, I walked through the Holocaust Memorial. I saw with my own eyes the result of animals like this and like Hitler and the rest of them, what they could do like to this nation. It's wrong, ladies and gentlemen. You've got to stand up, America. You've got to wake up. You against people like him who are trying to control us. They're trying to control you a whole lot. You are the you are so idiotic. You try to tell us what we can and cannot do. You try to arrest us. You come to my shows and put me in jail for what people pay to see. And your people are coming and locking me up. What are you getting? You can't lock me up because you're telling them that it's okay that I should go to jail. You got one of those pills? Give them one. No, you're saying that I should go to jail because I do what I want to do. Can we get to get to this gentleman, please? You know, um. 
It'll you be do? about 15 minutes. It'll take him about 15 minutes to watch it. You know, um, I serve this country, <laughs> and um, I'm going to tell you now, if I serve this country for people like you, I feel sad. This country's in sad shape. But yeah, both of you like you. We y'all agree. are sad. We agree. We agree. Are you from the South? Wait, wait, wait. Okay, Richie, what? The thing is, I'm sorry. He must be from the South because he keeps saying y'all. Wait, the thing is, what I understand is, we are young, and we're creating ourselves, and it's like not every single person on this panel has the same idea in mind. I know for myself, Julie and I, we are creative people and we express ourselves the way we want to. We use the club as a vehicle. But we're, I mean, I'm not saying that I'm I'm the cause for what the world is like going down in We into also hell. preach it's, individuality, it's but not through violence. Okay, but you know, people get stopped when they hear about the drug part. I mean, that stops a lot of people. But, but what I want to say is... But it gets a lot of other people going. Wait, wait, but what I want to say is not every, <laughs> but not every young person in the club and... and they they know, preach individuality. He preaches a sick ability to And there's a lot of us out there that enjoy that. Because well, not everybody got wrong. Wrong. I think the majority of okay. Americans well, don't okay. believe I don't believe that at all. I think that they're sick because they're Okay, another break. We'll control. be back. We'll be back with the audience, okay? If you're going to be in the New York area and would like free tickets to our show, please call 1-800-771-2700. Back now, you had something you wanted to ask. Go ahead. Yeah, I'd just like to ask the gentleman in the middle, have you ever been in any of the wars, Vietnam, maybe? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Vietnam? Never. The Gigi. Yeah. Oh, uh, what, what, what did you say? Did you, ever, did you yeah. ever serve in the military, serve in Vietnam? No, I have my own war. I'm fighting. All right. You had something over here. Yeah. I think the club kids look really fabulous, but does the drugs affect you at all? Excuse me, let me answer that. Like, will they affect some people? Jane, Jane, one of the, one of the, one of the important things. Does me not affect it Can I say something? Okay, go. Like I said earlier, which you all must not understand, gorgeous over there. <laughs> not everybody in a club is on drugs, and people need to realize that. Maybe that's a different show, it's a different subject, but I want it to be expressed. Right, Jane, and, 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 and every, may I interrupt a minute? Jane, one of the things I think people have to realize, it uh, was a good question about him being in a, in a war. Uh, most of these people are cowards. They don't. You're the they coward. won't. They Take won't do what they do You alone. did what I did. What for they are doing? Yes. Yes. Did you notice one of these young ladies mentioned uh, something like uh, cleansing a Holocaust? What I'm driving at is this: we have a serious problem in this country where individuals like this are being uh, uh, almost martyred because of their acts of hatred and anger. I think we've got to say. No to hate, like we have said. No to drugs. No, We've because to say, you have to hate. We have you to have to no. be hate right. to get we something done. done. No You've got to, to do hate. something about it, not talk about it. You have to, to take action. Yeah. We want yeah. people like you. Yeah, but you put nothing to jail for what we believe in. You're both right. <laughs> I believe in what I want to do. I'm going to do it. <laughs> right. I just have a comment on what the um, sergeant said. I think that jail is the wrong place for these people. I think more along the line of a psychiatric. Yeah. Yeah. I've been there too. I've been there too. Or the Bronx Zoo. You look like you brought your name from the zoo. Thirty-eight percent increase in hate-motivated oh. violence, and we could correlate that directly with it's like this. No, you that's, are that's the not true. I just, I just like to say I'm a club kid. I go out. I do what I want to do. I have my fun. I look nothing like that guy. These guys have their fun. They're not out raping people, hurting people, and doing stuff not like that. Really. And I'm I'm thankful they don't look like that guy, and that guy should be in jail. No, no, no. Well, because, because, because I don't get rich off it, and I don't entertain, then when I go to jail, you look, shouldn't uh, be raping. Look, uh, right. well, uh, I do. I just like to say. Is the root of all ego. I just, I just like to say. Guys, girls, animals, I don't, I don't care. care. That's something to be proud of. I don't know. And I can, way I can do whatever kind of sex I want, you, and I'm getting it. Stand Who, by. You're probably Excuse married me. to some old fat We're going to take bitch. another break. We're going to be back. We'll be back. <laughs> You're watching our guests talking about their own life experiences. If you have a personal story that you'd like to share with our show, please call 1-800-370-2712.
<laughs> that's something I want to say. I just want to say that I think that all these people sort of in some way need some type of attention. That's the key. That's yeah. something that we fail to mention. You know, maybe they haven't gotten the attention when they were growing up. Now all of a sudden they want all this attention. This is their way of saying, I need help. I want people to see help me. I want me. people to understand me. Help me pay my rent. Why are you so sure about that? Why couldn't it just be about non-conformism? I agree with you. It's just not. You, if you listen to some of the stories, it just sounds like there was something that was missing, and so now this is their chance. They're crying out. They want help. But you know, ma'am, we could we could use that as an excuse. Uh, what I have to my right, uh, you know, I'm really concerned about. We're seeing the beginning stages of a Waco, Texas. I mean, this. Okay, you know, wait a change, minute. Change. Look, here is point right here. What he's talking about is another day. How many of you Karen, agree no, with him? We're not. Yeah. James. Jane, we're not looking at a freak. I mean, this guy, you know, he's, he's not a freak. He knows what he's doing. He's carefully calculating what he's doing, and he has to be stopped. It's okay. a simple you're right. He has a point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, a point earlier made. It seems that, you know, everybody's okay. complaining that Gigi beats up his audience and does whatever. People are forgetting that they're paying and going in knowing what's going to happen to them. I have seen people, grown men and women, thank him after the show for beating them up. Thank I'm not lying. I'm, I've, seen, I've seen people say, Gigi, you kicked me in the ribs. It hurts. Here's the bruise. Thank you so much. And and how what do you think this does? Yeah, you uh, get paid for that too. It's what they want to do. If they they want to no, get they want to pay to get living, beat up. Living, living that's fine with me. I have no problem. Beat up people. Want to get well, beat well, up? Yeah. That's very awful. That's very awful. Awesome. Awesome. A police officer can beat up somebody, then you can beat him up. but I can't do it. I think the cop is scarier because at least he fights alone. The police officer brings like about a gang. That's right. the only way they yeah, well, fight. Well, yeah. 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 Absolutely. Don't fight you with his hands. Don't fight you with his hands. I don't know going. something, my friend. Uh, the police take a good beating uh, uh, in every form. But I'll tell you this. I think most American people, thank God that there's a thin blue line protecting them from this. No. Guy. No, not at all. You're doing more damage by, yeah. by locking people up. It's frightening that Gigi's out in the street. From yeah, because I'm going to have your daughter. Yeah. I'm going to have your daughter. <laughs> it's frightening that Gigi's out in the street. If you call yourself um, their father, then what you're doing with them, sleeping with them, is called incest. That's fine. All right, and in it's something that they can't do. Right. 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 No problem. I won't say my back there. Jane, this is what... That's an array of coffee Jane. coming up today. Jane, this is what... In incest? I can't say that. There's no right to tell me that I can't. This is my daughter. My wife was faced with 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And maybe the people, I'm glad you did this because you've exposed the ilk of America. You've no. exposed, you've exposed the, the power. That we're the having. power, the power of the underground <laughs> in America that speaks for the Sorry. angry youth. You're we're out of time. No, I see it, Steve, as a public the real service. No, I see it as a public service. People now know. I didn't know yes, who he was. We all know now. We're out of time. I want to thank everybody for being here. You, our audience. yours. Have a great day. For a transcript of our show, please send $5 along with the program name, subject, and air date to Burrell's Transcript, Post Office Box 7, Livingston, New Jersey, 07039. For a video cassette, call 1-800-4-VIDEO.